الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters today I sat down with our brother Imran and we broke down uh, all the different questions that I had about his da'wah over the last couple of years we spoke about the projects that he's launched the um, the controversial things that might have happened over the last couple of years and um, we definitely went into a, a lot of emotional things. I don't know how to preface this discussion in the right way. I think it's best if you just watch it, inshallah. Yeah, just watch it and listen and um, hopefully have an open mind. Uh, and hopefully you might see a different side to our brother Imran. Okay, so I'm going to go right into it. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, so, it's, it's really weird how we got here though, isn't it? Because if you think about it, we've been, we've been grafting for this this stuff for a while. And I even had this idea to have this conversation. Oh, oh, a whole year. Yeah, this is live, we're live now, yeah. Well, like I, was I had this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had this idea to have this conversation with Imran like over a year ago. I don't know if you, like, so do you remember? I can't, that, that was one of the first he things was, I he said, He wasn't right? there, we were in Brixton. Yeah, yeah. We then went he came to and stayed the night, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we went he to was so see, concerned. We went to see, um, what's his name? Adnan. Yeah, I, am, I not, no, am I allowed to see his real name on the mic? Adnan, my say. bookshop, of course. No, but, uh, okay, yeah. We he's, not one of them, he's not one of them Tequila we accounts see, that hide we behind the abu that you don't want people to know what his real name is. Yeah, of course. He's a selfie, so of we don't mind know my name. Of course, but some, Adnan. Some, people don't wanna let, some people don't want to let their real name known, but they're not Tequila. Anyway, no, the point I'm making is... Um, Ike, the internet knows your name. Abu, <laughs> abu, abu Rayyan, we went to see him. Anyways, the point is, I had this, I had this idea, which was I felt like Imran was badly represented on the internet. Um, and I wanted, to, I wanted to interview him to sort of clarify some of those doubts and whatnot. I want literally, and this is going to be a big conversation that we're going to have on this as well, is I wanted him to just be himself. It was really, it was really it was so complicated. He came to me with different, like, shubo hat about, oh, yeah, you know, but I need to come with this um, student of knowledge vibe. Not, not like to pretend to be a student of knowledge, but in a no, sense yeah, where I, student of knowledge I, should I behave in a particular way. I don't way. think I ever said student of knowledge vibe. Like, man, I, I, no, I didn't, you didn't I've use never those words feigned exactly. being no, no, a student of, course, of knowledge. Of course like, not. Like, I'm not me, saying I'm, that. I'm, 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 saying, I'm saying that the, way, the conversation that you and I had was something to the, to the effect of I, I, there's a particular way that a student who respects knowledge should behave. A person who's aspiring to be a student of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The way that a person should behave mm -hmm. in front of knowledge, there's there's a, there's a level of humility and whatnot, etc. That, that's uh, around the conversation that we had, and I wanted you to be authentic. Room I wanted you to you be. You wanted me to be real. I want, <laughs> yeah, I wanted you to be real. You wanted to be. You wanted me basically. to be. The, the guy was chasing Professor Lawrence Krauss down the street. Uh, some, something, professor, something professor. To that I, I, I want, I want that, <laughs> I, want, I want that kind of energy, definitely. But maybe, maybe in a different kind of way, because obviously, of life and maturity and whatnot. So basically, I guess in summary, this is going to be, this is going to start anyway, about perceptions. We had, okay. So look, to, to, I, I structured this conversation in my brain a couple of times before before, before we sat down. Even yeah. over the course of the last year, I've been structuring this this conversation. So <laughs> with, look, no, I'm being serious. I really did. So, I appreciate how much it means to you, act like it's no, love. Because look, I, 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 look, I, I know that. you in a way that. I think is uh, like it's a bit weird actually. How, it's intimate, uh, like obviously <laughs> in, in a no homo kind of yeah, way. Yeah, yeah of it's course, intimate. yeah. The, and, so, and so because of that, I can, I, and especially considering the first, the before we ever started to chill together at a, at a heightened kind of pace, I sat you down and I had a conversation with you and I, I asked you uh, some of the questions that I'm going to ask you now mm. um, and asked for your clarification on a couple of things because I was like, bro, there's some things that you did that certainly look dodgy. They, like, they, maybe they like, weren't, like but they what, looked like what, like what, well, We're going to get into them, inshallah. But no, I, I genuinely can't remember what was the conversation. Um, we don't have to go into it. Okay, like for example, I asked you um, what was your thinking behind this refutation or that refutation. Like, I asked you where your mind was at. Okay, uh, a yeah, couple, yeah. couple of things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. But, um, and uh, what was I going to say? That. Okay, so look. So the way this conversation is going to go is I'm going to ask you certain questions from mm -hmm. different phases of your dawa. Okay. So right at the start from when I first came across you, right, was MYM. 
Do you guys remember Muslim Sammy? Youth movement. Sammy, do you remember, do you remember NYM? Muslim Youth Movement. Yeah, when he did the Zina series. With the Gucci hat. Yeah, yeah, with the like, we're, we're <laughs> talk about that. So the, so that was the that Is was that the first online? one. That's still online, right? I think I think still. Yeah, that's still yeah. online. That was that that's a vintage Dowman video. It's way way back. And then so it's that, actually that weird because them times I actually had a bit of a bid. Yeah. Of course, it wasn't enough of a bid, but I had a bit of a bid. But I wasn't intentionally trying to grow a beard at that mm-hmm. time. So you'd actually think, if you look at the progression of my beard, because I think the beard signified my change mm-hmm. in terms of my personal religiosity, menhaj, and the approach to da'wah. Mm-hmm. You might think that that was somewhere in the middle, but it was actually right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. But that's because I, 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 I just missed the barber shop yeah. a few times. And stuff for like all okay, okay, perfect. So, so look, so <laughs> the, like I said, that's, that's, that's the first phase. Then the second phase was when you moved from, or, or you didn't move from anything, but it was it was when people knew you for giving da'wah to non-Muslims. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that was the whole chasing down Lawrence Krauss on the street. That was speaking to people at universities. That mm-hmm. was that. Then then the, then we had to switch from that to giving da'wah or giving nasiha to Muslims. Okay. And then it changed from that to, and I'm not saying that change was a bad thing. I, it was almost progression. It progressed from that to, to encouraging people to seek knowledge. And that's where we are today. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna, I'm going to ask you questions from all four of these. But the first question I want to ask is, mm-hmm. why did you choose the name Dawa Man? You want the honest truth. Um, <laughs> I want the calculated truth. Yeah, the honest well, Yeah. The honest truth. No, as in, I, w- I want you to be specific. I, I, I don't want you to just... You know, like say, like think about it, think about it and be... I don't need to think about it. I know, okay, I know, okay, I know okay, exactly okay, why I chose the name Dao, man. It? But it's just... <laughs> Basically, when I was young, I was really into superheroes. Okay. I was really into superheroes. Okay. Um, I used to... Now, of course, I, you know, I don't encourage anyone to watch movies or anything like that. And when I was into superheroes, it, it was not the time when movies were out. It was cartoons as it is anyway. Uh, you used to read comics, right? I used to be a bit of a comic geek as well. I used to have one two comic con, one two comic convention as well. Yeah. But um, obviously, I've got rid of all that stuff now. But basically, I was into, I was reading superheroes, man, DC, Marvel, you know, um, and I really wanted to be a superhero. <laughs> and I believe I was a superhero, and I didn't believe that you needed superpowers to become a superhero because Batman, uh, Batman was a superhero, mm-hmm. but he didn't have no powers. Yeah. He was just an intelligent, like optimum kind of human being. And I was like, subhanAllah, me, like, <laughs> inshallah, I want to be optimum kind of human being. But then I have something that Batman never had. I have the Quran. <laughs> and the course, Quran is from course, Allah. Course, so the Quran is supernatural. Mm. So I have access to this kalam of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And through that, I can help save the world. Wow. Like Batman wanted to save the world through, you know, justice and being like, you know, a detective and... Mm. You know, Superman wanted to do the same thing, and I don't know. Someone told me the slight elements of Shirk and Superman or whatever. I, I, I actually don't remember Superman to, yeah. you know, like some, some kind of superhuman. Immo- uh, he's immortal, right? Uh, he can die. He can die? Yeah. Okay, calm. But anyway, the point was that, you know, I wasn't like, you know, like, they were, all them are trying to save the world. Yeah. So I was like, I, I want to save the world as well. You're using the Quran and the Sunnah. I want to use the Quran and the Sunnah, though. Beautiful. You see what I'm saying? So, so I, I, have, I have one up on Batman. <laughs> ba- ba- Batman just had the technology. I got the Quran. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So okay. for, for that reason, I was like, I'm a superhero. I'm down. I'm down, man. Okay, it's actually funny because I used to mention that story all the time in like the first one and a half year of the birth of Dawah, man. I'd have mentioned it for a while. So Subhanallah. We're going way back. So 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 look. So yeah. so you went from not practicing, and did you go from straight from not practicing to giving Dawah? Or was there like a phase in the middle? Yeah, basically, basically the, the brother who gave me that one was a dairy. Mm. The thing is, he used to attend classes though. Mm-hmm. Allahum barik. Um, and obviously, when I looked at him, I didn't see the process that he went through to become the dairy that he was. I just saw the conclusion, the final product, which was this guy giving that or giving that to me. And I found it so awe inspiring and mesmerizing the way he would talk to me. And he would just put out the youngers in the uni prayer room and he would just chat to them and go chat to a Kafir, he's chatting to an atheist and he's dropping bars, he's chatting to a Christian, he's dropping bars, he's chatting to this, like some, some Zionist on, he's dropping bars. I'm like, wow, this is so powerful. And previously, before that, I was, I was, I was into music, right? But the thing is, me, um, and I'm not saying this. You know, from the angle of glorification to, to, to expose one's sin, but from the angle of just giving context. Um, you know, when I was into 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 music, I wasn't into what kind of stupid stuff that people are into. It was it's all stupid, but at mm-hmm. that time I perceived 
that you know there's darajat there's levels in terms of stupidity mm. and the music that i used to listen to was music that kind of had a purpose that kind of had a had a mission i would listen to certain rappers that had certain points of views that they wanted to kind of communicate certain mm-hmm. messages uh that 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 you know some used to call it conscious or positive hip-hop yeah, you yeah, know yeah. What I'm saying? so so that's the kind of thing i was into as it was anyway okay so free. I'm sure there's a word for it. I'm sure they call it ignorant rap or something no, today, con- right? Conscious. I don't, I don't, know, I don't, there's, there's conscious rap, and yeah. I think they call it ignorant rap. What everybody I, else does. I don't, I don't know what they call it now. I, I don't know, but, but the point was, even then, when I when I when I when I used to write lyrics, I used to do it because I had a point and a message I wanted to communicate. Mm-hmm. And when I used to listen to these rappers, I was like, wow, they, they communicate in such an eloquent way. Mm-hmm. But I could this man, the one who gave me that, or the brother who gave me that, he was using ayat and Quran, and hadith, and I was like, wow, this is even more powerful. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so As in for one to car- carry the message forward yeah, that for they t- want to portray. To carry a message like oh, for me, I wanted to carry like whatever you know social political message I had through the music. But here he's trying to carry like a message of salvation across, and he's using the Quran and Sunnah as a means, as a vehicle to be able to do that. So for me, I was like, wow, this message is greater. This message is a, is 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 a, is is a message that will save people from the hellfire. Mm-hmm. Not only that, like it's so powerful the way he's doing it, it's touching me. So it was obviously natural. It was a natural progression for me to be inclined towards that. Do you see what I'm saying? Because yeah. I was always a person who wanted to speak to people, who wanted to reach out to people, who wanted to influence and impact people. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. for me, it was it was a natural progression towards towards seeing that. But the thing is, what I did was when I w- when I started practicing and I saw that and I wanted that, I jumped straight to that. Yeah. But like I said to you, I missed out the process. The process was the knowledge, the study in the classes. Yeah. Yeah. And I started giving that, and that's why I made a lot of mistakes early on. And to be honest, I'm still suffering from some of those mistakes mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. Uh, because I say old habits die hard. So some of them are still in me today. Because I actually was given doubt for maybe about three years, four years, three and a half, four years before I was properly sat down to start studying. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so that was that was that. Okay, so so going on from that, mm-hmm. if there's any sort of, how do I say, like just just quickly before we get <coughs> into anything else, yeah. uh, this is just a quick one. Can you give any advice to some of these brothers who don't who don't seek knowledge but they give give doubt? Up? Yeah, I'm saying. As in, from the story that you just told us, can you yeah. can you tell us like, do do it or don't do it or learn from it? I mean, I think this is this is an issue we've been ranting about for a long time. Do you see what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. I've been saying for a long time, you know, do not speak without knowledge. Like mm-hmm. Allah Azza when He mentioned the list of things that we're to stay away from, mm-hmm. He mentioned profanity, that which is internal and external. Mm-hmm. He mentioned shirk, which is polytheism, which is the greatest sin. But like, and after mentioning shirk, Allah He mentioned. He said, "Wala taqulu ala Allah ma la ta'alamun." And do not say about Allah Azza wa Jalla that which you have no knowledge of. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Allah mentioned that after mentioning shirk. So, so one would think, right? So here, we, we, it, the, the list of prohibitions is going up in order of intensity, like profanity, mm-hmm. lewdness, uh, uh, you know, these filthy things, fahsha, then shirk, and then after shirk is mentioned what? Speaking about mm-hmm. Allah upon ignorance, without mm-hmm. knowledge. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons is because that the shirk, the foundation of it. In the first place, is a lack of knowledge. That's why the days of shirk at the time of the Prophet before his time, before his prophethood, are called the what? The days, days of jahiliya, the days yeah. of ignorance. The days of ig- the days of shirk are not referred to as the days of shirk. They're referred to as days the days of, of ignorance, ignorance because yeah. what caused the shirk was ignorance. ignorance. So, a person who's speaking about Allah based upon ignorance is speaking from a portion of what those people spoke. Mm-hmm. And if you carry this theme on, eventually it would lead to a person innovating, and ultimately. Uh, associating partners in worship with Allah, which is shirk. So, 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 so we stay away f- far from that. Hey, there's, a lot, there's a whole discussion on it, but since you said keep it Perfect. brief. No, as in, brief. That, I just wanted a quick one for yeah. those brothers, and hopefully some, hopefully some smart individual can cut mm. that one out and spread that on Instagram. <laughs> Sammy, you can do that for us, right? All right, perfect. Look, Sam <laughs> designed it. He can't. He's not an editor. He's a, okay. He's, he's, okay, a, okay, okay. He's so an artiste. So going on from that, I remember, it's, and this is going to be a big theme Sammy in this conversation. At least I hope, is that you changed. Mm. A lot of people say this, right? They'll say, look, Imran used to do X, Y, and Z, and everything he was doing before was great, and now, you know, we don't know. But I- I'm saying, even even myself being, a, I, I, to be honest, I don't think I ever had hatred or uh, like some blind enmity towards that that you were coming out with, but I did have questions. There, mm-hmm. was, there, was, th- there was things that I was questionable, uh, there's, there's things that I thought were questionable mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from the outset, but there was nothing that I thought was... Uh, wrong inherently, but at the same time, I did I did notice a change in you. So, for example, you used to wear Gucci hat. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I remember I remember the hat. I remember the Prada glasses. Like I hopefully on the video we can get up the um, the the video with it, it was about uh, Richard Dawkins or where he made a, he made he wrote a book called The God Delusion, and you were like ten mistakes in the God, and you were like. Um, 
uh, it, it all depends on your worldview. And right now, my worldview is Prada. <laughs> with Prada glasses. And it was great. And I thought that was really authentic. That was really who you are as a person, right? And we transitioned from that over to now you were a Kufi, you were a Thob, which is great. But I want to know what inspired that change? And is it is it a real one? Is it a, do you regret making it? Or is it a, you know, I have to play a certain role to be accepted by a certain group of people? Or was it something that made you go, okay, yeah, I feel happier being like this than I was the way before? Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. So you asked a lot there. Yeah. Can Look, I'm saying, what made you change from Gucci hat and Prada glasses to Kufi and Thob? But I'm saying, who, who said I changed the Gucci hat? <laughs> we don't see it in video anymore, so I'm assuming <laughs> you've stopped. No, okay. To be honest, so I know that it hasn't, but I'm saying they uh, you're, you're talking about me changing my external experience, uh, uh, appearance, right? Yes. Okay, Precisely. So I, know, I know a lot of people um, thought about this. Uh, I used to see it crazy in the comments when I underwent this 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 change in the beginning, because I'm I'm aware that a lot of people felt um, a lot of people felt very very um what's the word inclined towards me because I seemed like I was one of them. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. They were like, right, it's this. Yeah, it's relatability. People relatability. relate to yeah, what they exactly, can see. Exactly, exactly. So, so, so when I changed, it was like, whoa, whoa, he's an uncle now. Yeah. Like, I remember it's funny because uh, a bucket, <laughs> he saw one of the emails that one young sister sent me. I think she must have been about 17, uh, about her brother. And she called me uncle. <laughs> Now 28 years old. Uncle. <laughs> I'm not an uncle. Uncle but Dumb, I'm, man. That I'm, is I'm saying so, so that, that, that thing is, uh, is a thing that I know a lot of people um, had a bit of a question about. So obviously, look, certain things I changed because it was religiously, you know, ne- necessary for me to change. For example? My beard. Mm-hmm. Like I was a sinner when I was, when I was trimming my beard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I was with, I was associated to a certain group of people at the time who were making me feel like it's okay to trim my beard. And these were people who liked to make the religion very watered down and very kind of, very, you know, I do whatever you want, basically. Yeah. And I think we're going to talk about them people later on. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, I remember, I, would, I, I, remember I'm, I remember there'd be times where I would, I would, I would speak to someone out here, Fetua, and I hear the evidences for why a person should let the beard grow. And I'd be very heavily convinced and then I'd go back to these other people and then they would kind of just... Contextualise. It's for a particular time. Yeah, and, 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 and I'll be honest with you, actually, okay. I'll tell you something deep. Like, I always knew, I always knew that they were talking crap. Wow. And later on, I learned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he said, Al-birru husnul khuluqi wal ithmu ma haka fi nafsik wa karihta an yadqali alayhi nas The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that good, goodness... Is, is is good character mm-hmm. Like righteousness is good character Well if mahaka fi nafsik And sin is that which causes you A, a disturbance in your chest yeah. It's something that causes you uncomfortability in your chest yeah. And it's the thing that you don't like people to see you do mm-hmm. So some people they Try to find justifications for Things that they're doing when they know it's a sin Yeah but it's like if you're doing it secretly, yourself, like, deep down like, in your heart, you don't want anyone to know about it, yeah. and you feel uncomfortable talking yeah. about it. So, 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 so yeah. ask, ask okay. in your heart. You feel uncomfortable. In another narration, the Prophet said, if, if, he said, he said, ask yourself, mm-hmm. ask your heart, ask your heart. Mm-hmm. So you know uh, that which reverberates in your heart and causes disturbance is a yeah. sign that this is wrong. Mm-hmm. That's why I would go around and be asking people. Why am I asking people? I remember Sayyid Abdul Rahman said, he said, the fact that you ask, is it haram, shows. That is an inc- that, that, that there's something wrong here, because you're not gonna say yo is is it haram to drink water? Yeah, because it's clear, right? Yeah, well, it's it's funny you mentioned Ustaz. We're gonna yeah. talk about him in a second yeah. as well. But this 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 part we haven't moved on from fully. So yeah. I'm still mentioning the, the things you saw. So obviously, I, I I I there were certain things that I changed from my outer appearance because it was necessary because I I would be a sinner if I didn't change those things. Alhamdulillah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He brought me insight in towards that, and then I He gave me the tawfiq the ability to be able to actually adhere to it. Certain things I changed out of choice because I felt it's a part of maturity to do so. Like for example, I mentioned that, you know, before I would actually I actually remember I used to do a class, the same class that I do every Saturday in Hounslow. 
I used to do that same cl- I've been doing that same class maybe about four, four and a half years. And I remember about four and a half years ago, I actually remember till today. One time I came in with a turquoise basketball jersey. Mm. Of course, I had a had a, had a shirt on, like a, like a long sleeve shirt underneath. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't like, you know, my arms out. But I had I was wearing a long pair of shorts, sunglasses. I actually came in to teach like a ders. Mm-hmm. And I was looking, like you just came off the court. Like, like, a, yeah, like I just came, not just came off the court, but I was, I was, I was literally, I was looking. Like you were styling on the court. No, like you're kind of. Like, I, I was looking like no different to the people who I'm giving doubt to. Sorry. And that's the problem because if I'm one of you, then what am I trying to take you towards? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I'm supposed to be on a le- on a, a, a place where I'm trying to take take you on a journey. Mm-hmm. But I'm 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 behaving the same as you. I'm doing exactly mm-hmm. the same things that you're doing. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for me, like, like I, if I'm if I'm trying to be a teacher or an educator, I have to set a certain standard. You see what yeah. I'm saying? And also, and is that the line that you would draw between being yourself and um, not necessarily? As in, as in that line is is is, is a conversation. We'll come to that inshallah. Yeah. But there's also another issue, is the fact that look, I'm 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 not gonna lie. There are certain things that I like. Okay, like I I I. I I, I'm, you know, if Allah Azza wa gives me the risk to be able to afford, I'll, 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 I would love a Gucci pair of sunglasses. That's why I bought one. And, and actually, the one that I wore in that video uh, was actually many, many, many years ago. Mm. Like I actually, I think I purchased that maybe like five, six years ago, alhamdulillah. Um, and I haven't, you know, had an opportunity to do the same since. <laughs> but like, if I had some extra change, I would because I like those kind of things, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm conscious to not show that necessarily on camera because... I don't want people to think like raw that the dunya is something to kind of go after. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Whereas in, I'm not saying it's something. You, so to what go you're after. saying is so that you don't want people to be inspired to do evil. Not necessarily evil, but okay. but remember, like I'm trying to teach you turn away from the dunya. Okay. Turn towards the akhirah. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But you you see me wearing Gucci sunglasses. You think I oh, like you know there's nothing wrong with running after the dunya. Mm-hmm. But what you don't see is that I don't wear the Gucci sunglasses every day. Mm-hmm. That how often have you seen me really wear the Gucci sunglasses? In Only when we go to hot countries. Only when I go to hot countries. Even then, yeah. do you really do you see me wear them out all the time? No. And more often than not, in I'm not wearing experience. them. So then you see, but but the thing is that what, what I was doing was though I was wearing them regularly in the videos. So I was like, when I'm wearing them in the videos, uh, I'm not actually representing okay, who I really am. Okay. okay so it makes okay. it seem like I'm not. Why am I wearing it in the video? So you felt like you I was were actually being fake painting in, a picture. Yeah, yeah, I was actually I was actually I was actually being fake by wearing them okay. because I don't wear like it's not an everyday kind of thing for yeah, me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. so I wanted people to to not be misrepresented by that because I know a lot of people wear their their finest garments whenever they come and make a video or whatever to paint a certain picture of themselves. It's literally the same as when a person was would t- would you know would take a selfie. Not that I'm encouraging selfies, but then w- they always have to filter the pose. Mm-hmm. They always have to filter. No one puts up their the authentic self, right? Yeah. So now I was like, right, what am I doing? Am I I'm, 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 am I trying to show off? Am I trying to like am I trying to paint a certain picture or something mm-hmm. about myself? So for me, I started to become feel very uncomfortable, to the point where now Alhamdulillah, even like in my own life. Like I actually, I actually don't feel comfortable with those things anymore. And you see me like in my in my day to day life. What even though I love like I I, I would really admire like a nice you know pair of you know Louis Vuitton shoes or I would my, admire uh, you know a, a Gucci sunglasses or a Gucci hat. But then even then in my in my day to day life, you know, even though I I I, I my own one or two of those items there and there, I don't wear them. Mm-hmm. This is this is this is this is why I'm this why this is, why, this is, this is, why this is like the base uh, default. This why I'm yeah. Okay, perfect. Oh, I like that. That's that's actually a really nice conference. Of I, I didn't think you'd. Okay, nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, uh, perfect. So I. But it was like three okay. different lines of thought that I just fused into one. Okay, so there was a lot of chat going on a few years ago about mm-hmm. this con- uh, about this particular topic, which is that people and especially other people in the da'wah would say things to this effect publicly, which is, "Ah, oh, your people are going to turn against you." You know, before we come to that, can I mention one more thing? Go on. Because, like I was saying, there was three. The only one more thing. There's three elements of change. Yeah. So one was when that which I changed out of our religious obligation. One that I changed, I changed because 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 of maturity. Yeah. I felt like you know, which was the way that I would dress and 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 whatnot, right? Um. But then there was a third element of change. Go on. And this element was change was a change in my behavior, and parts of it were were changes which I'm happy I made. And parts of it which I'm uh, which changes that I'm not happy I made. Okay. Okay. So, obviously, you know when you when you when you come into the public eye, you get a lot of criticism. Okay? Yeah. And 
I probably get more criticism than most. There's there's not a single. Oh, I think I I think you get more criticism than anybody else. That's yeah, like, actually a huge thing that I came to speak I'm, about I'm, a year ago. I, I honestly don't think there's anyone in the UK that get that gets criticism more. Not than that me. it's a competition, but yeah. yeah, I haven't seen it get. I haven't seen anybody get it worse. Than you, you. And when I, I, when, I, when I say that, I, when I say that, I don't mean I don't mean I don't mean in terms of frequency or volume in terms of individuals criticizing me, but I mean in terms of the frequency and the volume of the different groups and, uh, that, that criticise me, like the atheists criticise me, the liberals, the, the secularists, the apostates, mm -hmm. the Sufis, the Barelvis, the Diopandis, the Ifanis. There's, like there's the that, and there's also within those groups, there's large numbers of people. And, and there's also, large numbers. The other thing is, they, they're really intense. Have you, they hate you with a passion. It's, it's true. Terrifying. It's, it's true. terrible. And the, the thing is, like, you even get criticism from your own brothers, like your own, your own like, like, like yeah. brothers. I actually you believe that's a bit moist. I'm not going to lie. I, th I feel like some of those guys come from the perspective <laughs> of, I'm going to just relay exactly and regurgitate yeah. what I see on the internet. Personally, I, I don't respect it at all. But uh, that being said, if people come with sincere criticism, mm. we have to take it. Nonetheless, thank you. Sorry. Thank you so much. But, 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 see, but see, that's the point that I'm making is that you see me, Akhil, alhamdulillah, I'm, I've, I've, got, I've got very tough skin. Yes. Like people, I've seen it. Yeah. Like you know, there's, there's times where I wake up, that's I, mean. I wake up to the internet, like, like mocking me. Like, and, and, and they're mocking me for no other reason except that I actually just care about you, and I just told you what you needed to hear. Mm. But you, you, you decided to make memes out of me, and videos like. But after then, they like, Alhamdulillah, Allah he made me tough like that. Do you see what yeah, I'm saying? So it takes a long time. Especially considering you'll notice these people are the same people on the internet talking about depression and uh, anxiety and these mm. kind of things. And then I'm um, like, it's it's fortunate for you then that our brother Imran isn't the kind of guy to you know uh, succumb to that kind of stuff. But you guys, are, yeah, Allah Mubarak, you guys are the same people talking about depression and being nice to people. And then yeah. you're on the internet doing this kind of stuff. Come on, man. It's at least at the very least, it's contradictory. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you something deep. Go on. That did cut me one time in it. Go it on. Cut me. But obviously I bounced back from it to show you the kind of level that go people on. go. When was this? This was maybe about two years ago. One feminist girl, um, she must have uh, said something on Instagram. She was like, uh, she was like, uh, what did she say? She said, uh, I can't remember what she said. I, the way I'm going to say it is not, not intense. She said it, but the wording she used was a lot more intense. But she, she was, she, she, she was like, I hope this guy never has kids. Wow. I hope she said, I hope this guy never has kids. Yo, that's evil. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It's and I, I remember my wife was with me at evil, the time. Evil, evil. And she was like, um, these feminists, man, they're supposed to be all about girls, but don't realize that you got a wife who's a woman mm -hmm. who might want a child. And now they're and wishing this on and you. And you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's deep. You know what I'm that's saying? very deep, man. So I, I'm saying, you know, when people say that kind of stuff, like, ah, that's, 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 that's peak, you know? That's cold, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, 100%. So anyway, anyway, anyway. The point, the point is, I get, I get, I get lots of criticism. Yeah. And then when you get criticism from from your own brothers, like elders, and you know other other brothers, you know who who, who are said of you. Yeah. Um, you'll give more credence to that criticism because these are your people, right? Yeah, it's natural. I actually, you know what I'm uh, it's funny because people make this, especially people who are you know on social media and all these different kind of things, and even older kind of people who have been in the public mm. sphere before new media, mm. they would say, oh, you just can't let the criticism get to you. You yeah. just have to look past it, etc." I don't think that's possible. I think everybody takes criticism yeah, to course. some level. They, they may, might even believe that some one in a thousand comments, there's some truth in it. And mm. if they believe that, then, you know, it's going to have some kind of negative impact. I don't think it's possible to look past every single thing. And you see me, I have a filtering process, which is if you criticize me, you have to be qualified. <laughs> That's, that's the way it's like, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, like, I'm not going to let any guy, single person yeah, come I'm, and like, say I'm, something I, and take it deep. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm saying, and like, even if you criticize my doubt, I'm sorry. Do you go out there and speak in front of people? Yes. Do you talk like, okay, you know, what what experience do you have? Sometimes you've got brothers who've been studying for a minute now, Allah and, and, Allah and that's Barak. fantastic. But they want to criticize and they've not been involved in a doubt. Yes. So then for me, I'm sorry, I can't give as much credence to you as I would to someone like my teacher, Sheikh Abdulrahman Hassan Hafidullah yeah. Ta'ala, who studied to a very, 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 very phenomenal degree. And at the same time, he spends day in, day out giving doubt. So yeah. for me, what he says is going to weigh heavier on me than what you're going to say. Do you yes. see what I'm saying? He's more qualified to talk Experience to me than you. Experience is the best teacher. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So for me, criticism has to be qualified. But the thing is, my, 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 filter, my filtering process wasn't as effect, uh, efficient and precise as it should have been. Like for me, I was like, okay, this brother's a selfie brother. 
and he's you know he's a brother who's, who's studied or he's got experience or whatnot so let me take what he says on seriously right mm-hmm. and um that l- l- let me go, not get it twisted the overwhelming majority of the kind of advice and criticism that i would get from from that camp would be valid and it benefited me which camp sorry the, the salafi camp like our camp right yeah. but it, then i had a sunnity wal jama'at like in there was an element of criticism which 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 really i found you know to some extent was quite basis which was a criticism towards my character and when i say that i say that fully acknowledging that there was valid criticisms towards my character and my behavior and my style that needed to be changed alhamdulillah and i'm working on it and i feel like i have worked a great deal on it but it was pushing me towards a direction to change there's a difference between correcting my character and changing my character. Absolutely, we're going to touch saying? on that. But it's and, if you and, want to talk about it, and certain people act, they want a man to change his character. Okay. And they done that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And and I'm not going to lie. It was not nice <laughs> because I became someone that I wasn't. I became a person who is is like a lot like I don't know how to say it like sometimes you know I think of words in slang way mm-hmm. and I don't know how to try it so I'm gonna say it okay just say but it be it, authentic like say I, it how I, you I, I like stush say. okay they're moving stush like, like right. I felt stush I felt oh you were moving stush yeah I felt, right. I felt like I became someone I became someone who's dry okay I became someone who like, let, let's not get twisted I'm a person Okay, so for people who don't know, stush is a good word for stuck up and dry is a good word for boring or plain. Yeah, and, 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 and like and like robotic almost. Yeah. And I saw that. I think I don't know I don't know about I don't know about anybody else, and but like angry it, 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 you know it comes across, doesn't it? It, know, it like, bleeds I, through I, like, the camera. Like, 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 I can when, feel when, the dryness. When, when, you see, when you see me get angry on a camera, I'm actually angry mm-hmm. for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla. I'm angry. Mm-hmm. Like when I was in the masjid that day telling the brother, shut up. Okay, okay. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna touch on that kind of stuff. I don't regret that. Inshallah. Okay, okay. They needed to be spoken we'll, to. We'll, we'll talk so about, we're talking about inshallah, yeah. But what, what I mean is that like, I bec- that was this difference between becoming angry mm-hmm. and being angry. Okay. And I just became like angry and negative and pessimistic. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm so happy Allah brought you into my life. Oh. Because I remember like, I remember like after two, three weeks of you being around, my brother sat, I, he was like, I like, I like, you know, Mr. Wavy. <laughs> <laughs> he said his real name. He said, One I like we'll, him. We'll I, was, I, was, I was like, why? He's like, he makes me feel happy. <laughs> I, I wasn't there, but <laughs> I was, so I did that. Okay, Thank sorry, you so sorry, much. Sorry. Thank you. I'm not going to lie. I'll tell you how I know there was a change in our life. Go on. Okay. <laughs> so okay, he said, like, yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I asked him, and he said um, that uh, he he knew he knew that there was a, there was a change of some kind because his sister messaged him, and she asked, "Who's this new guy in your life making you so happy?" So yeah, okay, okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like you, it. You, you, Good. You, you, see, you see what happened was that, yeah. I, that that I realized that you know the brothers, may Allah bless them and preserve them, have to understand culture. Yes. You understand? When I say culture here, I mean people are different. So yeah. certain brothers will go and they'll study in a particular place, a particular part of the world, and there's a particular culture there. Now, for example, if I go to Medina mm-hmm. and and I act and behave in the way I'm going to behave, it's disrespectful to the culture. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like cultures are subjective. Cultures change from time to time to place to place. There's, there's a way, to, like for example... I'm not a different person. I'm not a fake person when I chat to you and I chat to my dad. Mm-hmm. When I chat to my dad, G- mm-hmm. I look down, I don't make yeah, eye contact it. with him. I've seen it. That's not me being fake when I chat mm-hmm. to you and I'm like, yo, what are you saying, Ak? Mm-hmm. I am adapting to the situation. So he. So certain brothers will be a certain weight in a certain part of the world and they will look at people who are in that part of the world and they want to bring it here and then it's like, when. so, so that's one issue. Yeah. And then when it's like, yo, this guy here who's giving that one, he happens to be Salafi, but he's not like the rest of the Salafis that we know. So he must not be Salafi or something. Yeah, or something like that. And that's one issue. Then the other issue is that the elders, they're like, but we're a certain kind of way and he's a certain kind of way. And because he's not like us and he's not the way we were raised, 
okay, he must also not be a Salafi. Mm. That's the conclusion they come to. Or they, there problem. must be something wrong with it. Even though there's well, nothing that you're actually doing, which is nothing, nothing uh, nothing contradicting the Dawabit and the, the, the usul that we have in Salafi. You may not have done anything of like course. that, but they will just like take I'm, it. I'm, 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 okay. I'm a guy who, who will joke around, crack a bit of joke, do this and that, but I'll still refute every single Ikhwani, Shiri, you know, Sufi, Inshallah, out there. Yeah. Like, I've got no problem. That's for me. And to be fair, Akhi, like, Alhamdulillah, Walillah, Alhamdulillah, I pray that Allah Azza wa Jalla doesn't divert me from this path, but like, sometimes my positions on mawaqif salafiyya issues pertaining to salafiyya are sometimes more consistent than some of these people yes do you see what i'm saying so the, the we've point, spoken about that at length actually do, do you see what i'm saying yeah so 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 what i ended up having to do to get myself out of this was to reposition the people around me mm. now we've got brother sammy right there yeah this is this this, 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 this is my guy mr sammy it's, aka the panda it's funny he's 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 like the most creative person on the team alhamdulillah he's a designer I'm right Barak. I'm selfie to the bone. Like yeah. Sometimes, even um, I remember we having a discussion the other day, and we we're talking about one selfie person, and he done something, and he was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, what's, what's going on there?" Yeah. But like, if you see him, on the beard is there, but everything's there. Yeah. But you know, like he's 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 a he's a, he's a creative kind of guy. He's a different mm. kind of guy. You know, he's he's a, he's a graffiti artist. Like mm. Alambari, of course, oh, he's not vandalizing. He's a selfie, non-vandalizing graffiti. Art. I love that. That's do, actually do, a perfect summary. Summary of something. And, 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 and the beautiful thing is that that you know he he, he studies his man has just clear. Yeah. And and he but he has a different culture. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And you can be Salafi. It's like people don't have that balance. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? And when they started to push me towards a certain way, I realized that the religious obligation that I had to make in my in my appearance and my behavior, okay, I can't do nothing about that. That's me being mm-hmm. a slave. Mm-hmm. That which changed in terms of my maturity in terms of not dressing like you know one of the youngest yeah that was that was something that i decided i have to do mm. but then what they made me change just to fit into their kind of percept like their kind of criteria of the way a selfie should behave when you say they you're talking about elders and the the selfie criticism yeah, it's selfie criticism, right? And I'm, I'm saying it's not just elders. Sometimes it's youngers who've been influenced by the elders mm. or been influenced by people who, who who studied in a particular part of the world and came back that they'll, they'll enforce that upon you. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm a bit bitter about that, Akhi. And the reason why I'm a bit bitter about that and the reason why I'm a bit hurt about that, the reason why I'm very emotional about that, right, is not because I'm like, bro, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, like how these people are like, oh, you know, uh, I couldn't be the way I want to be. You mm-hmm. know, like, I don't really give a damn. But what, what made me bitter about that was that there was an element where I could relate to the young- youngsters over the last, you know, two years or so. And and I missed out on that. Where like, you know, I just became, I just became that angry guy. So everyone's like, oh, I really don't want to mess with this guy. I don't want to vibe with this guy. Like before I feel like, and you know what, in, in me saying that, <laughs> Like, you know, a lot of people might still be shocked. Like, people come to Matthew in the Masjid, it's flooded with youngsters. Yeah. Like, the sisters Matthew in the Masjid, it's flooded with youngsters. Yeah. The brothers are flooded with youngsters. But, like, I'm saying, it could have been a lot more. Yeah. Not that I'm concerned about the numbers, mm-hmm. but just the ability you're, to you're, be able to help So, help it people. bothers you that those people who could have come mm-hmm. are turned away from you from the fact that you made, you created a perception of yourself which made you look angry. Yeah, and, and, because and you tried to conform to a particular type particular right. of people which is not authentically it, who you it, are. It, it, without it, contradicting, contradicting the Dawabit and sort of uh, Ahl Sunnah. Dawabit also wow. meaning the principles yeah. of Salafi. But, but see, here's, here's wow, the thing. That's, but that's like, even, and even the people who come in, this, in the masjid and, and they vibe is because they see me in real life. And when yeah. you come to the bad ticket, you know, you see who I am. Yes. That's the point is that when you deal with me in the real life, you know who I am. Yeah, you there's some youngers. I've seen at Matin in the Masjid that have been there the whole time. Yeah. We, start, uh, we started months ago. But, They've but, been there the but whole I'm time. Saying, but I'm saying even, even the, the reason I think... As in they stay because they realize, oh wait, he's not like how, he, how people make him out to be. Do, do wow. saying, and the same with the sisters. On the yeah. sisters Matin in the Masjid. But the thing is, people online who are the majority recipients of my data, they don't. And then it dawned on me like I was like, raw. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I just look like one angry prayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. see what I'm saying? And and it just made well, like, it, 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 it upset me, man. But you know, there's a silver lining to every dark cloud. Which is? Uh, What's the one for this I, one? I actually got one message today, man. Like, it's, it's mad because we were talking about this yesterday, and that's why I was like, I want to have this interview today. I want this interview. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've been telling me for a year plus. And we just agreed to do it yeah. a year plus later. And, you know, it's because this issue just dawned on me. And then, alhamdulillah, in the morning, I woke up to a message from a sister on Instagram. It was a DM. 
And uh, of course I didn't like intentionally try to look at her or anything like that, her pictures or anything. But you know, like, obviously when you get DMs, there's a little small circle. Yeah. And you know, what was unintentional, I saw from her that she's not a sister who's wearing hijab and whatnot. And it looked, you know, like she was just a kind of person that you wouldn't think is practicing and whatnot. And she mentioned to me that she was, you know, she, she wanted to kill herself today. Today, this day we're recording, she said, I wanted to kill myself. And she said, um, you know, my dad died this year and, you know, I lost my job and I'm not being able to get all these jobs in my life. I wanted to die. She said, I wanted to end my life. She said, then I put into YouTube, I put in, um, you know, why do bad things keep happening to me? Dot, 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 Islam. <coughs> As like an Islamic mm -hmm. video on the topic of why do bad things keep happening to me? And she said, your video popped up because, because I actually have a video titled something like, do bad things keep happening to you? Or something like that. Yeah. And she was like, when I watched that video, she goes, that video gave me the will to not, to, to live. And she said, I feel positive now. And I realized why Allah took all these things out of my life so I can improve. And I realized now that my dad has gone. She actually got closure from the video. She said, I realize now that my dad is dead. He's actually gone to a better place. It was good for him to die. He was suffering in this world. And he doesn't have to carry on suffering the way we suffer now. So inshallah, he's going to go to Jannah. And inshallah, she said, I'm going to work hard now to meet him in Jannah. And she said, and I wanted to let you know this. She said, I wanted to let you know this in case you didn't know your dad was helping people. Wow, so that's actually for me wow. that was powerful. Because you don't even get how like <laughs> how deep what she said is. And I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. When I read it, I started crying. Like, I had tears in my eyes, like because I was like, I felt like it was Allah sending me a sign because I was feeling so upset. Akhi, yesterday. Yeah, I like, remember. Remember yesterday, like, I was I was I was feeling so upset. I was like, I because for me, like, I love the fact that I can reach out to people who are practicing. Mm -hmm. Um. But actually, my dad was specifically when I remember when I started this, it was because I realized that the masjid was filled with people who were already converted. But I wanted to talk to the people who are not practicing it, the ones who were in the clubs, the ones who were in the streets, the ones who were doing this, the ones who were doing that. So that's why I decided to come online because I can't go into the club and chat to them. But the ones who come on the clubs come online, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I could chat to you there. And 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 for many years we did reach out to them people, but then I realized that you know. I retained that crowd from the brothers because mm -hmm. the brothers would come to the message. You've seen them. Some of the brothers are mad. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you, you in the message, you Some just smell weed. <laughs> right? Bro, do you remember that one incident we had? Um, when the brother almost got stabbed in the message. Yeah, the brother was going to get yeah, stabbed, that's, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, so, so we, 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 Allah we, came for him we, and retained that. Was us. We retained that, but for the sisters, I felt like maybe we didn't retain that. And you know, sisters, pan, like, they're a bit miskeen, you know, you can't, be, you can't be too tough with them. The brother said, if you try to be too tough with them, you're going to break them. Yes. You know, because they're like a bent rib. Yeah. So, Maybe that toughness maybe pushed them away, but then it was nice to read that message. Sorry, yeah. I went on. Yeah, no, it's, on. it's it's fine. That, that message is really important. Issue. Are you, you going to bring we that were, Yeah, the sisters. Really we're we're definitely going to talk about it and why you um, love to talk about women's issues. We're going we're to touch on that, definitely. Now, okay, so let's bring it back to my agenda, which is a lot of people said this, right? Which is that... I'm not too far from the mic, people, am I? No, you're okay. okay. People who were with you mm. will leave you because of the fact that, you know, you changed and went from, you know, um, giving, uh, for the for lack of a better term, Ikhwani Da'wah, you went from there to giving Ahl Da'wah, and they were like... Ikhwani oh, Da'wah, like liberal Da'wah, you know, people... Yeah, no, no, I, <laughs> we're going to touch on that as well. But I mean, they were saying, oh my goodness, you know, because of the fact that you changed and you become more strict, people are going to leave you. Did people leave you? So are you talking about the people or like my... I'm talking about your circle. People circle. who were with you at the time. So whether it be cameramen or, you know, mm. people who were seeking knowledge with you in classes or people who you would give doubt with. with the, were these people there once and then gone after? Okay, so I, 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 at the time when the trans... There were people who I might have been affiliated to before the transition took place. Yeah. We're, talk um, we're talking at the time the transition took place. Yeah. Now, I I'm talking about people. the time where you went from... Uh, yeah. Nasiha sessions had just started. And then you went from there to growing the beard, um, more Kufi, thorough related mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. You went from there to there... And did people drop out between I, that or I, any of the I, four I, phases I, that I, I described? I, I which, the between any one of those transitions, did yeah. you lose people? Uh, no, obviously. Did you lose your click? Uh, okay, so obviously there were people that we might have stopped, you know, vibing with for whatever reason. But the the because sometimes people try to say, oh, you look, used to work with so and so person, yeah. but you don't work with them now. But the reason we stopped working was for other reasons. But they tried to stretch that over and say, oh, the guy stopped working with him. Oh, look, this is a proof that people leave him because he changes that or okay. They might have stopped working with me or I might have stopped working with them before 
the transition even took place. Yeah. So we're talking about people who disassociated themselves from, from me at the time. At the time, the transition took place. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So from my team, people who I was affiliated and associated with, there was probably about a good 10 people. And that's people who'd be at, at, at my house, like my, at my parents' place. You know, this, there was always that, cr- that, that squad, that clique that was always there. You know, my brother, Gulet, you know, <laughs> brother Oyon, shout out Ajmin, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, that, that clique was there. Um, the people who used to go to stab their man's classes. From them, only two left. Okay. From them, only two left. As in, they, they, two of them are left now or two of them had left? At no, the two time? of them had left. Okay. Everyone else remained mm-hmm. tight with me. We carried on working mm-hmm. and they were sympathetic and empathetic. Okay, to now, the what da- was the what thing that made them go? Okay, what, what made them go was that they stopped coming to classes. I mean, remember, we all started going to Stad Abdul Rahman's classes together. Mm-hmm. But in two particular brothers, they stopped. Okay. One of them stopped because he, Chris, okay, I remember he said to me, he said, it's too, it's too hard for me. I just, I just can't study. Okay. I can't see that. Like, I remember that I started going through Mustarah al Hadith, mm-hmm. which is actually quite a tough science. Yeah. And he gave up. Like mm-hmm. I remember we, he, he gave up and and Wallahu Alam what his um what his um what his issue was mm-hmm. and whatnot, but he gave up, but he wanted to carry on doing that or even though he had given up. Um and he left and his mm-hmm. boy left. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And what they had done was that they rallied a group of people who used to know me prior. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I wasn't associated with them anymore mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And they kind of made a click. Okay. You see what I'm saying? All right. But when, when, but, but when I that working, makes things a lot more clear, doesn't it? But then, but then those people who I was with from the beginning, I'm still with them till today. Mm-hmm. Look at Brother Gouled. He's been there from Gouled. the beginning. My Al-Bakr. brother Saad has been there from the beginning. Al Bakr has been there from the beginning. Yes, okay. Yeah. So I'm about it. You recently joined us, but inshallah yeah. you're gonna be there to the end. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Al Not Bakr, that recent. Al Bakr's yeah. been I'll, there. We, we go back to 2015. I guess we'll tell that story yeah, another yeah, we'll day. We'll tell that story another day. But I'm, I'm I'm saying not 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 just that. Like brother bro, brother Oyo, like he was there throughout the whole thing. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like he he never. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like Aki films. Yeah. Like, of course, like we don't we don't we don't work together in a sense where not because of any issues, but the you know brother's got things he's doing in life yeah. or whatnot. But we we, ne- we we never disassociated. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So the team always stayed because everyone transitioned to Salafia because Salafia mm. was the truth. Mm-hmm. And what led them to Salafia was the knowledge that they were studying. And the brothers yeah. stopped studying; they left. So mm-hmm. they they tried to paint this picture. Or, of or everyone ran away from down. Man, no, they didn't run away from. Would down, you? Man. Would it be? Would it be more accurate to say that those people who didn't come with you stayed where they were? Stayed in whatever level of studying or knowledge that they were at, and they still trying. And to f- you and your friends moved as far forward towards knowledge as you could. Yeah, literally, it was. It was like okay. we're, we're moving forward, and and it wasn't. And you know what? It wasn't even that they left us actively. You know that, right? Okay. And we never left them. It's that they just got left behind. Yeah, that's what I mean. As in, like they and were just and there, and, 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 and they weren't and progressing and forward, and, and you guys lie. moved forward. And I'm not gonna lie, we were literally trying to carry them. Like, mm. like literally, like like. Like please come, like with us, please. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? To the point where, like, some of the brothers will go out of their way to, you know, like, like to, to for them to come, but they didn't want to come. Hmm. Why? Because they don't want to put the. the and, and and I'll be honest with you, like, for any man to say, "Oh, the seeking knowledge is too hard," duh, it's hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like everything that you, you want to mm-hmm. do is hard. Nothing but, like, worth it, having it's, comes, it comes easy. easy. Like, I'm dyslexic, Achi. Yeah. I'm saying I struggle. If you think knowledge is worth yeah, having, I'm saying, I'm saying I struggle to read easily. and write in the English language. Like, and I learned to read and write in the Arabic language. Allahumma <laughs> barik. Like, I'm, 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 I'm saying so. So if I can do that, you can do that. But yeah. some people have this, this, um, you know. This, this I, I don't. I don't actually think it's too much to do with um, uh, intelligence or anything like that necessarily. I think it's all about your efforts. Yeah, uh, Ustad had that. We. The, I, I think someone, one of the brothers, might have cut. A, cropped out this video oh wait it was me <laughs> uh when he um, way. yeah the siba way video where he was like siba way is not an arab but he codified and put together arabic grammar texts which arabs today are using to decipher their language yeah, right. which tells you that it's got nothing to do with talent or anything like that it's just your own efforts it's, holding it's, you back. it's, it's, it's not just that like uh rabi ibn sulaiman al muradi rahimallahu ta'ala who is who is one of the top two, like you would say, most famous students of Imam al-Shafi'i, yeah. ta'ala. Remember, remember, there's the four madahib, yeah. four ma- schools of thought, Shafi'i, Hanbali, Maliki, Hanafi, right? Mm. And the Shafi'i madhab reached us through the students. Each madhab, mm. each school of thought reaches you through the students. Yes. 
because we never met Shafi'i, so who taught us what Shafi'i was on, right? His students. So obviously Shafi'i had his own works, but then his his student, who literally who 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 is like primarily responsible for carrying on a huge portion, if not the bulk of the madhab, was Rabi ibn Sulaiman al-Muradi. Yeah. And what's interesting about Rabi ibn Sulaiman al-Muradi was that he, if you saw him in the class at the time he was studying, you would think this is the most helpless student. Mm-hmm. Every class, at the end of the class, he would sh- sit Shafi'i down yeah. and he would say, I, did, I didn't understand it. Mm. And Shafi'i would go over it with him again and again. So when, you look, at this, when you would look at this student, you would think this student is appalling. He's never going to become anything. But the consistency that he came with yeah. allowed him to be Carry, he allowed one him of the to carry leading the imams of the madhab, yeah. yeah. And he carried the madhab he of Imam Shafi'i for. So it just shows you it's about time and effort that you put in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Allah said, Wallahu, 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 uh, Wallahu, yakhraj, what's the ayah? Sad. Wallahu, Yakhraju, Yakhraju, Yakhruju, Kum, Mim, Botoni, Umma, Hatikum, Lata, Lata, Lamuna, Shaya. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He took you out from the wombs of your mothers and you never knew nothing. Yes. So then Sh- Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, when he came out of the womb of his mother, he didn't know nothing. And I didn't know nothing. Yeah. But what's the difference between me and Ibn Taymiyyah? Is that he put an effort Efforts. after he came out of the womb and Efforts. I didn't put an effort after I came out of the womb. And that's the only difference. Mm-hmm. And these brothers, they just don't want to put their... That was a conversation yeah. I had with Saad actually mm-hmm. one, after one of your events way back when I was like, bro, uh, you know, I want to be a great scholar. Because I, I, was, I was so into the concept. I didn't have any c- concept. I, I didn't have any idea about what tafsir was at the time, but the concept of it, which is, you know, the explanation of the Quran, Quran yeah. I was like bro these giants like Ibn Kathir and whatnot and I said like no 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 slow down Ibn Kathir just like you came out of his mother's womb not knowing anything yeah yeah so yeah no there's very very, very so you're saying so you're saying, so, so you're saying that these people left on account of the fact that they didn't want to seek knowledge yeah that's or they that's what couldn't it was. put it in or that's what it was. something and, and, like and, and, that and then the problem was that you know when you, when you learn you gain insight so you change right and you and 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 you and can I, only implement that which you know. Do you, you, you see what I'm saying? So then, because these brothers were not learning, they were not understanding why we were saying certain things, we were doing certain things. Mm-hmm. So then, what they done was they judged what we were doing based upon knowledge that we had acquired. They were judging what we were doing based on knowledge that we acquired from the lenses of ignorance that they were still wearing. Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So that's why they. By the way, you know, being things. ignorant is not a bad thing, but being ignorant on purpose is. Yeah, that's what the scholars said. The ignorance so is of two types. There's there's jahl murakkab and jahl basit. Jahl 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 basit is what they call easy ignorance in the sense where you know that you don't know. Yeah. And all that I need to take you out of ignorance is it's to teach to learn, you, yeah. and you'll take it. Mm. But then the the ignorance is the problem is what you call jahl murakkab, which compounded is compounded ignorance. Compounded ignorance, which is when. Shout out Nahu. <laughs> which is when a person. Uh, he doesn't know But he thinks he knows Yes And that's the worst one Because You know Like the first one Is like a cup that's empty You just have to pour in right mm-hmm. But this cup is already filled mm-hmm. But it's full of dirty water Yeah So before I pour in I have to clean it Yeah And sometimes it's hard to clean Because they don't want to let go Because mm-hmm. they, he thinks that he knows mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah Like ignorance The first one is easier to cure The second one Sometimes is Is, is almost impossible and Then we have the mess Of the doubt scene That we have today yeah. Um. Okay So if that's the case Yeah Mm. Who would you say is your team today? Okay, uh, I'm saying like we're fifth on the fifth stage of that of the fifth phase of the doubt. So who's left? Okay, who's there now? So that's what I'm saying. Those who were there at the beginning, they still remain. Like like my court, my I mean, look, there were brothers who were friends and were given doubt, and then they, and they, you know, look, not everyone studies. Yeah. To want to become a student of knowledge, like some people study to a level where it's good. And even though they should should carry on, but they're not able to carry on it the way that they want to, but now they pursue life. Mm-hmm. But I rate them for taking out that time to study. It. Yes. So they might not be with us shoulder to shoulder today, not because they're like, oh man, you know, this guy's off it and I'm leaving him. But because life. Because life. Yeah. My brothers but have but, kids but, and but I'm not. saying from them, like I remember from them, the first guy who I sat down with, I remember I sat down with him in a pizza place in Kingston High Street eight years ago and we had this amazing dream of our data going around the world and that was Guled and he's still here with me today wow, and then there's my Man brother like of Big course G, there's my here. brother of course yeah. and then you know there's you Alhamdulillah and there's brother Abu Bakr yeah. you know um, and there's the admin aka Abu Monzo Abu Monzo <laughs> <laughs> Abu <laughs> he put us all on to Monzo uh, Allah Mubarak we've got some Allah good, you know, some good sisters who who, 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 who put in work yeah. And then of course there's there's other brothers like I'm saying, but this you know we've got brother Sami like this this yeah. is the this is the usul this is the foundation and obviously what brothers yeah. like strides and 
you know there's, there's, there's a big team when it extends and it, and it gets bigger but but I'm saying this is this is this is my this is my core mm. of course it's that Abdul Rahman you see what I'm saying and then there's brothers that we work with for example Ustad Abu Taymiyyah Ustad yeah. Yasimuni who are the teachers on knowledge called Ustad Abdul Ahad Ustad you know Khalid like the team only it, they only got bigger they tried to make it look like we were just two three guys sitting in a room crazy <laughs> but making the, videos on yeah, YouTube but the team only got bigger <laughs> alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah the team only got bigger that's good okay so what ma- this is this is really important? Go on. Hmm? Yeah. They did. They actually. There was had- definitely that perception. It was there. I remember, especially on like the social media and whatnot. It yeah. did leak over. They, it's it's actually funny because I they, was tweeting they, against they them. They were man, actually. They like, were there. They were actually post that like, they were actually building a narrative that I was crazy. Like I remember when this guy, um, you know, Abu Isa Namatullah, he came onto his Facebook. First name drop. Uh, and uh, what did he do? He was like, look, I seen, I got psychologist friends and I spoke to psychologists and they diagnosed this guy and I'm telling you he's crazy. <laughs> he diagnosed the guy from a video. Wow, subhanAllah, yeah. he is talented. Not even a video, like a one minute video. <laughs> <laughs> that is talent right there. Okay, mm-hmm. look. So, so I'm saying they started pushing this concept. Okay, so what made you decide to stop giving da'wah to non-Muslims and start giving da'wah to Muslims? Especially considering... You know, I haven't even asked all the questions that I wanted to ask in that time. Qadr Allah, we're running out. But um, uh, from that time, there was the whole Lawrence Krauss thing. And I'm sure that was where the narrative was being built. Because this is about perceptions, right? That was when the narrative was being built that, you know, he's a bit nuts. You know, he's chasing down a guy down the street, etc., etc. Do you regret that? I think the Lawrence Krauss thing, I think that... Because we're starting a, a series soon called Rose Down, man, right? Yeah. Sure. Okay, okay, I forgot. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll leave that one incident okay. and we'll. Okay, fine. So I think, I think specific that's incidents fine. like that. Yeah, we'll leave I mean, that for the. the I, I, I can give you. We'll a leave short that for more to come. Yeah, because that's 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 juicy. Yeah, we, <laughs> you know, there's a lot. There's a lot. Juicy, honestly. No, I'm actually thinking like you know, we had, I actually Allah gave me a very fulfilled experience, man. Like that we can actually do a show like the roast down man show. The concept is to basically go through. I'm gonna roast the, him, inshallah. Yeah, incidences from the past. I'm gonna roast him and basically just Don't break him down. And there's yeah. a lot. I'm saying there's there's a whole plethora of things to go mm-hmm. through. <laughs> okay, so actually, wait. I'm gonna change my question. You mentioned a couple of times now, Ustad Abdurrahman. Now, I love Ustad. Mm. Um, I'm sure many many other people do. But my question is, when did you decide that? You know, firstly, how did you find him? How did you find Ustad? How did you find him? Where did you find him from? Because he's a gem. So I remember we used I'm to have a, a project called Islam Hounslow. Uh, Are you from Hounslow? I'm from no, Hounslow. I'm joking. I'm yeah, <laughs> everyone knows. You're from Born and raised. Oh, wow, eh? Born and raised. Eh? Hounslow, West London. People, people, people talking trash. They know where to find me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, I've, I've said it a few times myself, which is if you really have a problem with what I've got to do, what, what, I've, what I have to say, there's a way you there's, can find it's me. It's not even a way. It's, it's not even there. that hard. I'm there, there every Saturday. No, you know what to you know find. <laughs> anyway, it's gone. You were saying. I was saying. Uh, so Islam Hounslow. Islam Hounslow. So we, um, we started giving da'wah locally in our local community, and we had this little center that someone kind of you know gave to us, alhamdulillah. Um, and uh, we were looking for, t- for, for for a teacher to teach, and I remember the brother Faisal. Okay, where when was this? So your first you mentioned mm. eight years ago with Gulad, you were sitting in in pizza shop. Mm. Uh, that was 2010. Um, Lawrence Krauss issue was two, Lawrence Krauss issue was 2013. When did you find Ustad? So that's so I'm coming. So, so the first time I probably heard about Ustad was around about that Lawrence Krauss time. Okay, in fact, probably just before that, before that, right? Yeah, it was before that. Yeah, 2012. That's okay. the first time I heard about him. And so basically, been I remember the brother Faisal, Allah and Dr. Uh, Faisal? No, 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 no. Brother Faisal. There's brother Faisal and there's Dr. Oh, Faisal. Oh, brother Faisal. There's many oh, Faisals. Look, SubhanAllah. I actually love him. There's 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 brother He's Faisal, great. which is Faisal Qardi from yeah. Islam Hounslow. Yeah. Then there's Dr. Faisal. He's a really great. He's the family doctor. Allah and Barak. Doc, if you see this, and, and he's and, he, and, and, he, and he's putting a... A chokehold on, on 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 the atheist, metaphorically speaking. Allah and Barik. And then there's Faisal, and yeah. that's Faisal Chowdhury, yeah, our, <laughs> our brother. <laughs> Allah and Barik. So, brother Faisal, he was like, "Listen, he must have gone to one of Ustad Abdurrahman's classes in in the original Dar es Salaam in Yeah. And he was like, "There's this guy, and he's something else, and mm-hmm. we gotta bring him." And I'm not gonna. I was reluctant because you see, me at that time, I was in that whole. You know, champagne dawa. You know that whole champagne. Celebrity. What does that mean? So champagne dawa is that dawa where it's like, you know, celebrity dawa. You know that, 
that you can't listen to a guy unless he's famous and you know like you know what i mean right which is the you're saying in a sense where like you, i would you, you, like really you, true, you, you wouldn't go to benefit from the guy if people didn't know who he was but yeah and it's and the reason okay, for so that you're is saying because you were it was not so you were saying you were apprehensive to go to a sales class because you didn't know who he was beforehand. No, I definitely didn't go to his class. I was apprehensive to bring him to our center. Oh, <laughs> because, okay, because, great. Because, you know, it's due to my bad manners and my ignorance at the time. But I was like, no, mm -hmm. we're not going to bring this guy. Yeah. I don't know who he is. And in my mind, I remember I was trying to give all these, these rationalizations and justifications, you know, oh, this, that, this, that, and the other, oh, he might not know this, or he might not know that. Little did I know this man. <laughs> so knowledgeable. <laughs> yeah, about a lot, you honestly. And, and really, it was just because... But had you seen, uh, did Ustad have a YouTube channel? No, did he, So he was I just... I mean, yeah, there, there, was, there was videos that someone was uploading on his on, on, on different YouTube channels and whatnot, but I never really knew him. And then and then I remember there was one brother, and he's dead now. May Allah have mercy on him. I mean... Um, this brother... Yeah, really amazing brother I remember he sat me down one day and he was very close to Stad Abdurrahman and I remember we went to Taste of Lahore we've been going to Taste of Lahore since that's then. a shameless plug yeah uh, so he went to Taste of Lahore Uncle um, we love your restaurant no uh, School Road Hounslow yeah. off Hamworth Road <laughs> I'm bad Uncle, so uh, get the chicken korma and a butter, butter naan so uh, shout out to Uncle Pasha <laughs> Uncle we miss so you. basically we uh, we um, we went there to get some food and it was me, brother Faisal, and this other brother, may Allah have mercy on him. Uh, and the brother was close to Stab Dharman. He was telling me about Stab Dharman. I became and I became amazed. He was like, you know, if you ask this man a question, he'll bring you pages, he'll bring you sixty pages of an answer. And then he'll actually tell you, he'll say, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to do more. Wow. He said, I'm sorry, it's it's inconclusive. Like So from and what it, you and got, he gave you sixty pages. He was an academic. That yeah. that was that was the first taste you got. You were like, Okay, yeah. so he must be at least uh, some kind of uh, some kind of academic yeah and the okay. thing is me i always wanted to study that's why i was like i was with all these like all these liberal groups and whatnot and going to their classes but the thing and i would travel to america to canada. study i would travel to canada for this class. i would travel to ireland i would travel to i remember me and Gouled and some other brothers you know we used to travel to bradford we used to travel to Birmingham. we used to travel to nottingham you know just if there was a class but it would only be for these like celebrity kind of you know milkshakes <laughs> Yeah, and uh, who really would actually damp? They were actually teaching us wrong things. The reason I'm so bitter was they were teaching me wrong things. They were not, you know. And that's another story. I mean, that stuff's all online. The point is that, you know, we would we, we we wanted to learn. Yeah. And in my mind, I only thought I could learn from famous people. Then when he broke it down, there's this there's this ustad who's unknown. He's what you know, but he's powerful like, in terms of his knowledge. I was like, yo, this sounds amazing. And I remember the brothers. He said, he said, go study from him, Emran. He said, you man, sh you man should be benefiting from him. Yeah. I remember we were parked out after we finished Taste of the Hall. They dropped me home and parked outside my house. And I was like a 23 year old youth. And you know, these are grown men along Barrick. And they're like, I'm telling you, study. I remember then I said to Brother Face, I said, okay, hook it up. I was, I remember I was traveling out of the country the next day. I was like, when I come back, please hook it up. And it cut long story short, basically hooked up the classes. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And from that point onwards, we studied for a month. And then I stabbed that man just as he was getting into it. And we were starting to taste knowledge. Oh, he yeah. He was like, I'm leaving. He flew away. And he left for two years and then he came back. <laughs> and since he came back, we'll be studying with him since. That's how we found the start of the Rahman. Wow. Mm. That's actually really deep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I really like that. So that was the, was that the inspiration then behind leaving off atheist da'wah and giving da'wah to Muslims? Because no, you started no. learning. No? No. And I mean, as in, as in learning led me to stop giving doubt to those people but it's not why i stopped giving doubt to those people okay. you see what i'm saying look you have to understand something giving doubt to non-muslims is, is, is a cause that i believe so strongly about yeah i was gonna say we, we like, got the doubt on channel like, right yeah and and, I, and and we've been promising and, people we're gonna bring that back for and, a while and people now people need to know like how much it hurts me and how much pain i feel that i'm not doing that right now okay especially when i see so many people doing this and they're doing it wrong did, you know, yeah, like, it's a bit like, of, it's a bit trendy now, yeah. isn't it? Like for example, we got um, the whole speakers corner thing. Yeah, which it's a joke. I don't like, really want to talk too much about it, but no, the let's concept. Talk about it. Let's talk about it. Speakers, speakers corner. Oh, we'll touch on it. Is like okay, fine, let's go on it. Yeah, it's it's proper. Like, I think people who don't personally, think I think it's, I think it's a bit corny. I think it's a bit yeah, a bit a bit cringy. Yeah, from from when you know, there's that there's that idiot stepping on eggshells. There's, there's, there's that idiot guy who just talks bare trash. I don't want to mention him and whatnot, but you know, there's one guy who just talks absolute trash. Yeah. I'm saying certain oh, men wow, was, are doing videos really with this guy. Okay. Like there's, 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 there's one like East Asian, far East Asian done. And this guy, just he, he doesn't have a comment. He just shouts and insults Islam. 
I'm saying this is not a guy that you can ever have a real conversation with. But from when you do an interview with him and put it on your channel, it's just because he was trending in the park. And you're only doing that because, okay, let me let me, let me chat to the guy who's trending. Like these guys, mm-hmm. akhi, they're such, such, akhi, they're such donuts, man. Like, I remember people in Hyde Park were not famous. The only ones who were famous are known were the Muslim du'a to used to go there. So yeah. as a Muslim there, you shouldn't give your platform to people who are unknown. Because you're going to make them famous and then they're going to get a platform to speak and they're going to drive people away from the deen. And not only that, I see people like Wallahi who are calling people out for debates and losing miserably. So it, and, and it's embarrassing and you don't realise that you're actually, you're, actually, you're actually harming the hearts of these people. So when I see people doing this and they're doing it wrong, it burns me. Mm-hmm. As in, I want to cry. Like, as in, because I love this da'wah. Yeah. I love speaking to atheists. Mm-hmm. I love speaking to Christians. Mm-hmm. I love speaking to the secularists. Mm-hmm. And I know how to speak to the Makhachab. But the reason I stopped. You kind of jumped out of that field for a while. Because I, I, I remember, I'm sure most people do as well. We, you had those videos where you speak to people. Like yeah. the, the Lawrence Krauss thing was just, that was just one from many. Like you would, uh, for I mean, example, the Lawrence they spoke, he spoke to that. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it's, uh, it's, it's literally a, 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 a throw, like what's the word? It's a, it's a red herring or something to that effect. But I remember like, for example, he spoke to that Sikh guy. He spoke to that Christian, Pakistani guy. Sikh guy is a bit different. Uh, Sikh guy thing was not really a debate. He, uh, it was, and, it was and a I, I just think you had a conversation with him. Yeah, and you he, had a conversation with a Christian, a Pakistani guy. These kind of things. Um, the atheists, Christians, all that of was, that, th- those. That, those things are really powerful. So the, 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 the point is, the reason, the reason why I left was because, um, really, truly, really, actually, man, like, okay, I'll tell you something. Go on. This is something that one Jehovah's Witness guy said to me. He said this to me, and it only the penny only dropped after I started studying. He said to me, bro, because I remember I was chatting to him and I was just blasting him with the Bible. He said, okay, what you've told me is that my Bible is wrong. But you haven't told me why your Quran is right. And he was Ooh. like, and he was, yeah, and he that's, goes, that's and he goes, a, and he goes, and he goes in this discussion, You've used my Bible more than your Quran. Like, isn't you're still dependent on my book? Wow. And he was like, um, it was powerful because every time I speak to him about Islam, he'd pull out a verse from the Bible and try to respond from the Bible. Yeah. Which means he knew about his book. He knew about his book. Right. And then, shall I tell you something deep? Go on. You know, for a long time I was giving that out. I knew more Bible verses than Quran verses. Wow. And, I, and, 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 and shall I tell you something else? The majority of your brothers in Hyde Park. Take no more Bible verses than no Quran verses. Wow. Don't let it fool you. They know more Bible verses than no Quran verses. They don't know their book. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's literally parrot fashion. It's what you you pull out a little page from a book or a little section from a lecture or a debate and you use that as ammunition to go in. And I didn't want to be that fake guy who 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 who's claiming like I know about my deen, but I don't know about my deen. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm out there trying to convince you with your book. Mm-hmm. Allah gave me the Quran mm-hmm. The reality is I didn't know mm-hmm. You know I, I'm, I'm chatting to atheists And I'm using Let's be honest man there's, there's, there's a guy There's a Christian guy I won't mention his name But there's a very famous Christian guy Who's known To Just destroy atheists Yeah But he uses Philosophical arguments That he Tailors in a Christian way And those are the arguments That we all use him mm-hmm. I'm like right I'm taking arguments To prove Allah's existence From a Christian philosopher mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. why I'm I'm not able to use the Quran to the point where I, I was like, whoa, whoa. Does the Quran not deal with these issues? Yeah. But it does. Yeah. But uh, which almost implies from the actions that the Quran is deficient. Not that you believe that, mm. but people take that approach. It's true. It might be that they believe that slowly somewhere inside their yeah. heart. Okay. So, f- I, see. so, so, so I, I was like, listen, That's problematic, I have definitely. to stop this because I can't do something in a fake way. So... I have to learn this stuff. Like, Akhi Ibn Taymiyyah dealt with atheists before atheists existed. Yeah, I saw him, yeah. I remember. Do you understand? I wasn't there, but I Ibn remember, Qayyim yeah. dealt with atheists before atheists existed. Abdul Rahman ibn Yahid Mu'allim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he dealt with them in the previous century, but you don't know their texts. Abdul Rahman Nasir Sidi dealt with them in the previous century, but you don't know his works. Now, scholars deal with, dealing with them today, but you don't understand the language that they write in, so you can't benefit from their works. Mm-hmm. So for me, I had to learn, but now here's the thing. I didn't want to just learn in an unorganic way where I just 
You know, because like when you when you're studying Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Taymiyyah is not like the first person you study. Ibn Taymiyyah is complicated. Mm. Like even when we have our Mutun Talib al-Im series, you know, they're studying the Deen series. His books are not for like the, the third or fourth. Yeah, I'm seeing the little yellow book, the little blue book, and then in the third level you get the the little red book. Yeah. The little red book's the first time you meet Ibn Taymiyyah in that yeah. syllabus. And then that's that's his most basic book, al Wasatiya. Was yeah, yeah. And then after that you need to study the next level. You need to study his Hamawiya, his mm. Tadmuriya, his and so on and so forth, mm. you know, you go up and the point is that the, and, and then at them stages then you start learning how to deal with the secularists, the atheists, the liberalists. The Orientalists. The, or, you know, and, and, you, and you start to go into that. Mm. The point is it's later. So I didn't want to be a charlatan, a fake, and just go straight to the top. And and by the way, I wouldn't have really understood it. Like for for example, me, like if you ask me about um the the law of thermodynamics, I can tell you a couple of things about it, mm-hmm. and you might think I know, but do I really know? Probably no, not. I, I do though. I just, I think I love it, you know. But I just pulled out a little page from a book, or I pulled out a little section from a lecture to be able to chat to the atheist. Yes. But I don't know it, so if you ask me a couple okay. questions, it's very quickly I'll be exposed. Yeah. That's also, also the reason that's, why that's, that's, uh, one point. Go on. that's why you saw some brothers in Hyde Park when they chatted to certain Muslim brothers mm-hmm. who actually do study the religion. Mm-hmm. They got exposed, mm-hmm. and they went they, 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 like, "Rah, okay, rah, you know what to say to the atheist, but you don't even know about your own deen." Yeah, and exactly. the reason why that's dangerous is because if you if you're speaking to a Christian or a Jew, for mm. example, a Jewish person, I, I don't know if Jews are offensive, but Jewish person, and they, they like, for example, you're trying to attack or uh, criticize their religion or whatever, and they bring you something that you haven't heard of before, mm. that could be a shubha, bro. Of course, it can. that could be a doubt that, that could creep into your heart. Of course, it can. And, and it's it's li- literally because you're ignorant about what you believe. Yeah, hundred percent. That's why. That's that's why. That's why there's a guy in Hyde Park who was a non-Muslim. He became a Muslim. He left Islam. Alhamdulillah, he became Muslim again. And may Allah keep him there, but he I might mean, he might switch again because yeah. they keep hearing things. I, I've t- I'm telling you, I've seen brothers who are telling me, I've been watching high pop videos and now I'm doubting Islam. You see the point? Yeah. So this this is problematic. Now the thing that's that's that's. Hyde Park is a. Uh, I, I got my own uh, opinions about that. I, th- mm-hmm. I think the conversation. I, I think that was a is a difficult word mm-hmm. to apply to that kind of scenario. That's it's more. Not that, it's, it's, it's entertaining. It's a freak at, definitely. At hype. Ha, you, you have you, you, you kid, did you come with me? I we did well, we Hyde went we went together shop. once. It is Hyde it Park's is definitely a, a bit shop. mad. Like you got you got a guy. I wouldn't encourage anybody yeah, to go. Like you got a guy one to side. He's 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 saying oh, I'm a prophet. Another guy saying oh my god. Another guy's saying, doing some kind of magic thing. Another guy's talking about Israel. Another guy's talking about this. Another guy's. Talking about, I, can uh, I went I went there once. Um, once with a friend of mine. We actually saw uh, one one particular atheist guy and he actually had no idea what the hell he was talking about he went afterwards there was a couple of people recording it was actually really funny we spoke to him about like maths and science and these kind of things and uh he he went over to the guy's recording he was like can you delete that video please <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was actually terrible it was disgusting guys off. yeah and just to mention the second reason without going too deep into it because he dwelled quite a lot on the first but the second reason why i stopped that doubt was because um i felt like i need to focus on the muslims you know it's like it's like we got we got a door and we're bringing people in, mm-hmm. but they don't stay. But, but I'm but I'm saying I'm saying the people already in the house are leaving through the back door. Yeah, uh, I remember. Do you remember the conversation we had with Ustad a few weeks ago? When he was there, like uh, one of the reasons why he went to Dubai, or rather, one of the, one of the reasons why he went to Dubai yeah, he left was country, because yeah. he um, he felt that giving dawah to people in the UK was, for example, if he because he in when he was when he's in the UAE, he does a class once a week every Friday. So he's like, in the time where I'm giving them a class, I'm teaching them, they they rise and then they stay at that level. Mm. And then the next week I give them another class and they rise and go up to that level. But he was saying that in the UK, he will bring them a class, do them a class, for example, let's yeah. say every day, for example. And in that day, they'll go up and then the society will pull them back down again. Yeah. So they'll go up and the society will pull them back down again. So especially being in the UK, I can I can understand why you were like, instead of bringing more people in, let's prevent the people who are here from leaving. <laughs> yeah, so because like the, the UK, society like will strip the Islam out of them every mm. day that goes back. Exactly. So they need, uh, in some cases, a, a greater um, emphasis. Exactly. So for me, like... Inshallah, yeah. I'm gonna get back into this into this doubt and Muslim thing. Yeah. And when I do, bi idnillahi ta'ala. Yes. Wa billahi tufiq. Bang bang is doubt time. Yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> oh, that's, Inshallah. But, that's very sweet. But I have to. I've got. I've got a target. Like even even this year, I was gonna start. I was gonna start. Mm-hmm. But I was speaking to my brother a couple of days ago. I was like, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it some more time. Yeah. There's a few more texts I need to memorize. There's a few more things I need to learn. Mm-hmm. And when I come, I'm gonna come hard. And also, I wanna set a 
system and a mechanism in place of giving that or to the Muslims who are already in the house. Mm-hmm. So that when I step out of the house to bring others in, mm-hmm. there are people in the house that are already giving that or to them, so they're not leaving out the back door. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole point of knowledge college. Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to touch on knowledge college in, in, yeah. just, in just a minute. I know the but knowledge college. <laughs> yeah, knowledge college is amazing. Um, so, wow, we've covered actually a lot of the questions that were. This this is this is a deep question. This it's a bit sidetracky actually. What of the old videos that you made? Actually, not all of them put together. What do you think is the most effective video in terms of reaching out to those same brothers and sisters who, <coughs> you know, are swaying back and forth, either can't leaving the house or you know they go from practicing not practicing. And as I mentioned, the society strips them of their Islam. Of the of the videos that you've made, which do you think is the most effective in terms of encouraging them to practice, seek knowledge, or whatever have you? Do it. In terms of the most effective videos, there's a few, but like I would I would say that there's two videos that are the most effective videos that I ever did, alhamdulillah. Um, and that's looking at it from many angles, looking at it from the angle of the feedback that I got from the videos, the angle of the way people keep bringing these videos up, saying this video is the video that changed my life, this video is the video that changed my pers- my perspective. There was the video... Mention them and I'll tell you what I think as well. Sure. Go on. I want to hear what you think first. Okay, go on. Okay, what do you what do you think they were first? Okay, the f- the mer- the main two effective videos for myself. I'll I'll tell, I'll tell you the ones that I thought were very standoutish for me. Um, the the, okay, the the many channel by videos. Okay, channel so by vi- <laughs> videos that we, n- not not just the ones that I was on, but the ones okay. that I <laughs> on. No, I mean uh, my input it wasn't wasn't really great in those videos, but Love I'm saying some. No, like for good, example, the the voting video I thought that was really effective. Okay, mashallah. Um, especially to, to to highlight this conversation of seeking knowledge and whatnot, uh-huh, it really uh-huh. brought a light to. Okay, so this religion is deep, and there's great nuances that you mm-hmm. need to learn in order to in, in order to understand. Uh, and a couple of others, not they're not coming to mind, but I'm sure you have a couple that that comes to mind, inshallah. Okay, so so for me, like, because the voting video is a bit specific, I'm yep. talking that. Like when, I, um, when you say effective as well, I'm thinking what was m- in terms of comprehen- com- being comprehensive. Yeah. And there was a video that we did in Eid, uh, when we were doing that outside the shisha cafes. Yeah. The, shi- the shisha Yeah, I remember, video. I remember, I remember. So, so the I'm recent one or the one from last year? Okay, so we, we do it every year. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, missed a, cu- like a year or two here and there, but we do it every year. I'm talking about the first one. Okay. The first one where I was wearing the blue uh, Ralphie hoodie. Yep, yep, yep. And, you know, you've got the police cars. And we're outside the Shisha Cafe on Edgeway Road. Remember, yeah. So I'm saying that video, that video was mad because um, I, from Allah, it's, it's not for me, but I, that's the one video I've seen time and time again. People are like, it's only a 10 minute video, but I believe I spoke from the heart that day. Yeah. Allah knows best and it hopefully is accepted, but. I mean, I mean. Yeah. I, I, I've, if you look at what I've said in other videos, it hasn't touched people. I've mentioned more points that are deeper and more important than other videos, but that video just seemed like it touched people and people were like, well, I actually just started practicing from that. Mm-hmm. How many men have said that to me? How many sisters said that is, is, is beyond? And um, come to think of it, I remember before I made that video, because I, 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 I felt that was one of the most sincerest I've ever been at any point in my life. I was really, I was really, before I, 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 I talked to people, I remember it was true pain that I felt because I never prepared anything. Mm-hmm. There was no lecture, no, no. It was literally just, okay, talk. Because, you know, like, wallahi, when I'm in them situations where I'm seeing the way the Muslims are behaving, I feel, I genuinely feel pain. Mm-hmm. I, f- I feel pain, like mm-hmm. it hurts. Mm-hmm. So I that pain manifested from, inshallah, a sincere place. And I feel like maybe that's I why. Mean. Huh? Oh, sorry. sorry no okay. oh, wow. And the second video in terms of being most effective was um the refutation uh, it's, it's called uh, uh, what happens uh, behind the scenes in the Dao scene. Okay. The yeah. one we're, we're that was actually really juicy. It's funny. That's going to be an episode on um, Roasting <laughs> Dao Man. We're going to make a whole episode about that so, one. So that one was ref- reputation of Yasser Qadi and Haytham Haddad. Yeah. The reason why that was powerful because Yasser Qadi is the, the head of the of the deviant Ikhwani Dao in America. Yeah. And Dr. Haytham Haddad is the head of that Dao here in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um. We're going to talk a lot about these two you know, on them, sure, roasting Dao Man. I, I got all kinds of things to say, to which may not necessarily agree with everything you say about them. No but problem. Go on. No problem. But I'm saying they were the heads, and they're seen as like the the scholars or the main guys under which everyone else 
all the other like Ikhwanis are under them basically yeah so that's why i wanted to do it based on them and it was a paradigm shift because a lot of the times when you look at these people you don't see them to be deviants because sometimes they masquerade behind a Salafi aqidah it's really sweet what they yeah, do it's, really, it's sweet. really sweet and i don't want to go into the intricacies of it because you have to refer back to the video to know the differences yeah. they're subtle but they're dangerous yeah the point where they take you outside the ahlus and the, the unknown path that is ultimately going to take the hellfire but i feel like that video was with Allah's permission, he gave me the tawfiq to put it together in such a way mm -hmm. that it really, because I remember I was talking about this issue a lot before and people were like, you know, because they have their love that they had for these people, they weren't listening. Mm -hmm. But that video, it was like, okay, it's clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that video led people to Salafiyah. Mm -hmm. Salafiyah meaning Ahlul Sunnah wal I led them to it. So the first video got people practicing, mm -hmm. the Shisha one. Yeah. But the second one got them practicing upon the Sunnah. Okay. So those two videos, I feel, Whoa. were the most. Okay. Effective. So what, what was your like, for example, your mind state for both of them? How were you feeling when you made the one outside the shish calf, and how were you feeling when you made the refutation? It was pain for both of them. From what angle? So I'm I'm sure the first one is more along the lines of you know. I was seeing I was sinning. seeing sisters. That I remember, I remember I saw one sister on Eid day. She was being touched up. But mm. by a guy who looked like he was some kafir guy. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just pain. Like, Muslims, like, you just spent Ramadan, like, worshipping Allah, begging Him mm -hmm. to forgive you. And Laylatul Qadr, you probably catch, caught or tried to catch. And then, literally, the day it ends, you're throwing it all away. So, it was pain. Like, seeing, what are you, man, serious? You were just in a masjid last night, and now you're having a rave on the streets. So, it was, a, it was pain. Pain. <clears throat> like the way you feel pain if your little brother or sister or your daughter or your child or was 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 like hurt. Like imagine you you, you went into a room you 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 saw one of your siblings just cutting his wrist. Like, you're like, yeah, what, what are you definitely. doing to you? Like, what are you do? You're destroying yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. It's like, it's like they were stabbing their, their iman. They were stabbing mm -hmm. their heart, their spiritual heart. They were stabbing it. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were just trying to rip it out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think it was pain. The second thing was pain. Was um, that's why I put out that video, that one where they say I'm crazy, where I was like. Uh, I know something you don't know. You know that video? That yeah, I, I remember it. I remember it quite well. So, so it was, again, it was a place of pain because, and I think we'll talk about this in a lot more detail in the um, in the uh, Roasting Dattelman series, but I also went for a summary of it in a lecture titled Why I Became Sedefi. Like I was seeing, the, I was starting to see the reality of these people, these institutes, like Al-Maghrib, Al-Kawthar, and Bayina. Mm -hmm. And I was starting to see these people who are my role models, who I love so much, who were my people that I looked up to, that I benefited from, I was seeing them for who they really are. Mm -hmm. And it was just businessmen. Okay. And and they were doing exactly what Allah mentioned the Jews did, where they sold their religion for some cheap change. Okay, now, uh, are you saying that, you from what, you're, from what you're saying, are you saying that those people don't have the same inspirations or the same drive as you do in terms of you feel you feel the pain and suffering of the muslims who don't see the effect of what they're doing and so these leaders or these people you refuted they don't feel that same pain I, I, it's not for that the effect of that doesn't it's show it's not for me to because that's to, that's that's a question of the heart which i don't really have an answer to but mm. from the way that they move i'm telling you these people these people are money orientated like come on one of them one of them does hajj mm -hmm. Yeah, so Qadi does Hajj. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how much do you think he charges for Hajj? Uh, I found out today. It's um, uh, I'll pretend I don't. Uh, how much is it? I heard that the minimum is twelve bags. Wow, Subhanallah. Twelve gram. Wow, that's. I'm saying twelve grand. What's I'm pretending to be surprised. I already knew that. No, but yeah, no, but that's, no, but that is crazy. That's that's crazy amount. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm saying some of these guys are charging twenty grand to do a lecture. 70 grand to do a lecture, you know what I'm saying? And, and 70,000 pounds or dollars to do a lecture. Yeah, so I'm, uh, this, this, this is what it is. You see what I'm saying? So the reality of the matter is... You can seek knowledge for free. Huh? No, I, said, I, I just saying you can seek knowledge for free. But go on, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> so I've, I've said, so for them, their motive is money. Yes. And then the way that they get there is, okay, by, wait, wait, is uh, by distorting the religion. Yeah. But, uh, but look, to be fair, some of them are sincere in their bid'ah. Okay, but, but, but before you go there, you, you mentioned a second ago that you can't say what's inside the person's heart, but you yeah. just now said that it, their motivation is money. How can you say that if the I motivation is also something? But I'm talking about You're saying what's what really shows. Apparent. What shows? Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. 
I'm, I, even, even what I just told you about Yasser Qadi charging 12 Gs to yeah. go Hajj, I'm not saying that from the angle of that's his motivation. Okay. It might not be. He might have some other justica- justification. Yeah. But it shows money's a concern. Yes. Okay, you can say you that. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm saying, uh, we, d- we, do, we do Umrah. Yeah. Not no 12 bags though. Yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm saying, I can't, I can't begin to fathom. I, rem- I remember sometimes we're barely cutting costs. And it's like, bro, I, if I, if I up the price, these guys who need the Umrah are not going to be able to make it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? And then yeah. I'm building this like celebrity culture, like, oh, you have to come with me. So mm-hmm. I'm saying, I'm saying there's a lot of problems. So, so the point is these people, I saw from them, some of them were just after money and some of them, so, so, so based on that, they would change the religion. Some of them would change the religion because they actually believed the religion was that way, but it was wrong. Mm-hmm. And it was hurting me because they weren't listening. Mm-hmm. I sat down and I remember when I when I when I challenged them respectfully. Mm-hmm. And when, when I say challenge, challenge is even even the right word. I remember I just I asked. I was shut down in ways that were like, whoa, like okay, so when so, you know you're all nice and friendly, but when I pinch when I pinch you, a certain put way, some I, kind of I pressure. Put, put some kind of pressure. Whoa, whoa, mm-hmm. you change. I was just mm-hmm. asking a question. I was voicing an opinion. You might tell me freedom of speech everywhere, but when I want to talk about the sunnah, well. I'm crazy. I'm mad. So I was seeing lots of things. Well, like, and lots of things became cl- well, like, lots of things became clear to me. A lot of which I mentioned in the video. Some things which I haven't mentioned till today. So I was like, "Whoa, you people have really deceived the masses, man." So it was a it was a place of pain that like, you guys are supposed to be the beacons of light for those who don't know. Mm-hmm. They trust you with their religion, mm-hmm. and you are giving them. That which is not going to take them to a path to salvation. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Or it's going to divert them off. So, so, so for me, that's why, why I've done it. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned something. How long have we gone so far? We have been going for an hour and a half. You mentioned oh, something. You mentioned something. You said, um, uh, I saw Sister something, something, something. Now, that leads me to asking my next question, I which saw is. What? You saw a sister. You you saw a sister outside a shisha club or something, or shisha cafe or something uh-huh, like that. Uh-huh. Uh, which leads me to my next question: Why is it that there's been such a huge um, emphasis, or like a huge like? It seems like there's a big stress on sisters, 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 girls' issues. You know, women stuff, and like people criticize you quite a lot for that on the internet. I see mostly, oh yeah, he's just talking about girls' issues, blah blah blah, etc. So, do you have anything to say about that? So. When I address the sisters' issues, there's a there's a strategic element and then there's an emotional element. Yeah. So which one you want to start with first? Uh, emotional, because I, I think that's the one that people get the most uh, offen- offended by. If you want to go strategic Emotions first, I'm happy not to always do that be too. Good. Okay, what's the strategy behind the that? Stra- the strategy is that the woman is the future. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, the, like without without a woman, there's no future. Okay. She is a queen to her own nation. From her will descend generations. She will give birth to her own nation. She will give birth to her own tribe. So if she is correct, her offspring will be correct. Yes. So then when, when a sister comes to the deen, I become very happy because I see that as a whole nation that just came to the deen because mm-hmm. I'm looking at her progeny mm-hmm. that's going to come, inshallah. But if one sister leaves the deen, mm-hmm. I don't mean like leave Islam, but stops practicing. Mm-hmm. For me, that's a nation it's that a just stopped practicing. It's a cause of great concern. Absolutely. It's a nation that just stopped practicing. So, so strategically speaking, it fix the sisters. Mm-hmm. Inspire them. Give them an opportunity to, to change. That's but how is, you it change because is it because you feel like, and this is something that has been said, is that um, you speak to them because you know, you can pick on sisters because, you know, they're miskeen or something but like that. But come on, that's wrong. I don't pick on sisters. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, firstly, if you're, if you're talking about my content, then just come to the brothers mad in the masjid and you'll see the way I treat brothers and the way I treat sisters. Yeah. I've never, ever, ever been as, as, as direct with the sisters as I have been with the brothers. Do you mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just that they misrepresent. Like, you know, people always say to me, oh, you're always t- refuting. What do you mean I'm always refuting? Have you seen the majority of my videos? I haven't done a refutation. How long? How many? Well, how long has it been? Uh, it's a very long time, Akhi. Perhaps even when I was doing refutation, what, was I putting a refutation every week? No. 
Maybe. And that's something that I actually have to credit. But um, you know, I'm putting out videos every day. Yeah, though. I was going to say, there's a wealth of content. Refutation is probably a percentage or maybe two of that. Yeah, so, so the same okay. when, I, when, I, when, cool. I, when I'm addressing sisters' issues, like sisters sisters have no problem when I make those videos, them inspiring videos about women in the past and how important, like what I'm saying right now, no, the, I think, I think the, the problem women is are going to love it. Yeah. But then when I've released a video about the importance of, you know, hijab and modesty and, you know, uh, you know, like for example, if I talk a video about husbands' rights, for example, mm. in marriage, or if I talk about you know it's anything that you know women will be averse to because of the feminist culture, mm -hmm. oh look at this guy, misogynist. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm saying so. Yeah. <coughs> it's a double standard. But that aside, the reason was because really and truly you want to change the oh, my change the women. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying also from the angle of that, what's destroying the people is immodesty. Yeah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said إذا لم تستحي فصنع ما شئت If you lose modesty and shyness you do whatever you want do whatever you want I mean you would do every other sin Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhum said that the Prophet that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he connected Iman and shyness and modesty so then when shyness and modesty haya it goes the Iman follows it the person's Iman goes so the point is that we are suffering from a decrease in Iman Mm -hmm. uh, a, a d decrease in iman and that's connected to 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 the lack of modesty and lack of shyness and in this in this in this equation you see if the women are shy mm -hmm. it stops a huge facade mm -hmm. do you see what i'm saying yeah because it gives the men nothing to be immodest towards yes do you see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. And but the men have the issues as well. Yeah, I was going to say their response would be. Yeah, but I'm not going to mention. As, as long as you touch it. I'm not going to mention. You know why? Go on. Because the feminists need to learn, man. Need I deal learn? with the brothers. Okay. I don't have to. I don't have to. Like, it's, it's like, for example, like for me to have to clarify every time I mention something about the sisters, to have to say something about the brothers. It's like the same way. It's like every time a terrorist attack happens, they say, "Oh, do you do you uh, mm -hmm. do you uh, condemn it?" And you're like, no, but uh, no, yeah, I, I do of think course it's I do, not, it's not, but, but why do you have to make me say that? Am I yeah, not a human yeah, that yeah. I will con condemn all atrocities? So then, mm. why do you put me in a situation where I have to, like, come to the matter? Do you see how I chat to the brothers? Sorry, okay. you, you see how I do, we stuck I, it on the I brothers? I do get that, you I do get that, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. we don't have to talk about it because you asked me a question about mm. the sisters, that's yeah. what sisters need to learn and be understandable. Is that sometimes if you ask me a question about the sisters, I don't need to talk about the brothers. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to talk about the brothers? I talk about the brothers more than I talk to the sisters, and I'm harsh with them, and that's. When it's no, the only reason why I mention it there is because they, they, uh, what people will say, and to be honest, which is fair, is that on a particular issue, which is about the looking, for example, the looking that men, the, the look of a man, mm. is you, you mentioned if sisters were modest, then they wouldn't have anything to be immodest towards. There's two sides to that coin. Of course there so are. in that instance, it would be fair to mention both of them, no matter which way you go, whether you talk about sisters first or brothers first. Yeah. Either way, it's fair to mention both of those points. But you're right. You as are, well, but the only which reason is I didn't because because the point <coughs> is you asked me why am I focusing on sisters? On the sisters, yeah. So exactly. I'm building my case. Saying. I said of number course, one, yeah. because sisters are the solution. Number two, it would stop a huge level of immodesty mm -hmm. in the community you just what I'm saying mm -hmm. I'm building my case it's not the only reason mm -hmm. but it's coupled that's why I mentioned I mentioned the primary strategic region which was the reading tree this is the solution towards the Ummah changing mm -hmm. like Maryam's mum wanted a son yeah but Allah gave her a daughter yeah Maryam salamun alayha do you see what I'm saying yeah. and then from that daughter came the great son Isa alayhi salam mm. But I get to show you that that great man wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for that great woman who preceded him first. Yes. So the woman came first in that regard. Yes. Do you see that's what I'm saying? That's deep. You know, so, you yeah, see my that, point? That's a good so, one, so yeah. that's my foundation reason. And I'm mm. building my case. But that's strategic. So mm. You want to know the emotional reason? Yeah. Because I love them. <laughs> uh, they're my sisters. So no, it's really they're important. They're my sisters. It's like, really important. It's, it, I, it, it, I genuinely have love for them. Yeah. Like, for me, I know a lot of these sisters. They never had dads. And if they did, them dads were absent, neglectful. Especially in oppressive. our society, in our yeah. like, Pakistani community. You get that a lot. Not just the Pakistani community, actually, it's in the, it's in the Bengali community. I thought it was just yeah. the but it's in the Bengali community, it's in the Somali community. Yeah. I can't comment on no, that. I, 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 I didn't want to comment on the That's as far as it goes them. for me in terms of like knowing the depth, the, them communities in depth. So yeah. for me, Akhi, it was, it was it, it, it's a pain because I'm like, I, you know, like, Inshallah, when I have, and then if Allah bless me with a daughter, akhi, like I have to be there for her and I have to teach her, you know, how to be ready for life. Mm -hmm. And I have to give her a man's love such that she won't be deprived and be begging it from other men. Do you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
Because when a father gives love to his daughter And a brother gives love to his sister She Because the way Allah created you Is that you need that love You need that love from the opposite gender Right? Mm. So you, if, if you don't have that love from your father You have an imbalance You have an absence of a male figure Who loved you Who cared for you Who, 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 who treated you in the right way So what that, what, what's, that, what's going to happen is that You're going to have a void Which you're going to want to fill Subsidize And yeah. you'll subsidize it through any guy like how like do you find girls who've been generally speaking of course there's exceptions like the general rule of the family is that when you find a woman who's been shown love from her parents dad and mum she's not going to be sleeping around with a guy who's like a druggie a drug yeah drug. those girls got standards man but you know why I'm not about it and like, if, 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 if a father's always telling his daughter princess I love you my darling my princess yeah you know? My, like my baby, like for example, mm. right? These are things that a father might say to a child. And if a guy comes and he says, "Yo, babe, baby," she's gonna be like, "Ah, oh, my dad, yeah. my dad, I'm my dad's baby." Like, are, you, are you trying to yeah, call my dad? Yeah, calls yeah, me, absolutely, you know absolutely, uh, absolutely. When, when a guy comes to her, there's a standard that's gonna be set. Yeah, she's which gonna is say, like, Look, I know you my need to, I, you like, need to come yeah, with she's quality." Gonna, now. She's gonna say, "The men in my life treat me a certain way. Mm. So you wanna be a man in my life?" Yeah. You you need my dad. You gotta compete. I know how, you you gotta be there. And the reality of the matter is that I know. These dads, a lot of them didn't do that for their daughters. And I'm saying we live in a day and age where parents have failed. We, we live in with failed parents. Mm -hmm. And it affects the boys, no doubt. Like in, Wallahu alam, I'm not no psychologist or sociologist, but based on my anecdotal evidence and experience, I feel that it affected the sisters more than it affected the brothers because they needed that male figure more. Mm -hmm. Not to say that men don't, mm -hmm. but they needed it more. And then their the male figure became Justin Bieber or Adam Saleh or this guy, that guy, or the guy in school. You know, like the first time a guy gives her attention. Oh my God, like he gave me attention. Mm -hmm. She just wants attention, you see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just trying to be like your older brother. Yeah. I'm just trying to be that older brother to you that you didn't have. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what it is. That's really fair, man. Yeah. I'm actually really happy we got that. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so wow, that actually answers a lot. Now of I, wish, I wish, I wish, they could know how how deep that feeling goes. Can you like describe you, it for us? I can't. Can you try? I don't know how. Like you, you see it in me, right? Yeah, no, I've noticed like, it does certainly, but I, I can't, I can't um, compress all of the video that I've seen in my mind and put it in. No, I'm not talking about people. video. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying like uh, the stuff that I've recorded I'm, with my eyes. Uh, I can't. Oh, okay. Into like show yesterday, it to like how do I describe it? Like, you know, I came to know of a sister who's like in a bad situation, man. Like she got, you know, violated by. Couple men. Oh, okay, yeah. Like previous marriages, so she hey, yeah. kind of got violated, man. And um, young girl, two time divorced. First was a physically abusive relationship. Second was a mentally abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And she was a woman who had aspiration in Dean. Like you know, she wanted. She she had a lot of aspiration in Dean. Like she mm -hmm. wanted to study, and she used to you know. You know, she was she was she she wanted she wanted to be something in the dean, you know. Yeah. And now, uh, she's 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 losing her dean. Mm -hmm. She's losing her dean. And that troubles you? It, like I'm saying, uh, just just when this particular sister's issue came to me, like two nights I couldn't sleep. Wow, subhanAllah. Like I'm being serious. Like mm -hmm. I don't even know. Like two nights I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of the time like, I actually stopped reading these stories. Like, I remember me and Guled yeah, you told me are the you, two you guys who outsourced it to Guled. Yeah, me, me and Guled are the two Big guys G. who read the Nasiha session emails that get sent in. Mm -hmm. And I had to stop. I said, Guled, you do it. And I remember mm -hmm. I came and I saw Guled on the bed. Mm -hmm. Eyes teary. Mm -hmm. And he's reading through the emails on the Gmail. And he's like, bro, like, if I didn't have Islam, I'd be cutting my wrist right now. Like, mm -hmm. this is pain. Mm -hmm. like, I'm reading people's pain, you know? So I'm saying that it Yeah, it some of those emails are dark, man. Yeah. Some of the ones I've seen, honestly, well, like, yeah, I so I, I make wish, it, oh, well, like sometimes I read an email, sisters telling me, raw, you know, I'm being beaten by this that like I I actually wanna go I wanna beat up the person who's doing that. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
like, from an older brother perspective, it, like, how can you do that to my sister? Yeah, like, it's, I understand. It's, 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 it's wrong, like, in a sense where I shouldn't be, like, physically, but I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. I thought the same way, like, my sister, if she mm-hmm. was being attacked, mm-hmm. are you mm-hmm. mad? I have to run up. Mm. No, 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 I can, I 100% get <laughs> that. I'm talking about the feeling that I have. That's mm-hmm. real, mm-hmm. Okay, man. Like, I, this, that's, that's deep. Like, sometimes I'll read an email, I never met you, but it would disturb me. And that's, it's just from a place of care. You see what I'm saying? I care for the brothers too. My brothers are a little bit tougher. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, mm-hmm. and it's not just that. Shall I tell you another reason why I try to, I, I kind of try to o- maybe overcompensate mm-hmm. by putting out stuff as sisters, is because with the brothers I can vibe with them. Mm-hmm. Like I might, I might not, you know, make as much like videos about them specifically. Even though I don't think that's correct. I think I made enough videos about brothers, but like at the mission, I can sit with them for hours and chat. And you know they come to my house I can go you know we have we everyone knows me I'm not like a, a diva like in the sense where I'm with the people mm-hmm. do you see what I'm saying I'm not some guy that you see on YouTube who's got 100,000 plus subscribers and it's like when you see him it's like so I want to keep moving like mm-hmm. I'm with the people do you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. but I'm only with a, a certain gender that's my gender because mm-hmm. I can't free it so I'm with mm-hmm. the brothers so for me I don't feel as bad but for the sisters that like, I know I can't like if I was their mahram I would, I would be like their brother you understand mm-hmm. I, would, I would be around mm-hmm. But I can't, so I try to overcompensate for that by a sister's class. Like I haven't, I have a brother's class, sister's class, and then I have an extra sister's class mm-hmm. every Saturday in Hounslow, which I haven't done recently due to you know time. But I do that because I'm like, okay, they need the extra. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's it really. So that, that's it. On sister's There's a lot, but I, I talk a lot in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. This is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, look, I want to know now about that last transition, which is from giving doubt to Muslims online which mm-hmm. went from, it was mainly like from a desk, video camera, microphone, for example, in the CS session show. Mm-hmm. It went from there to, what well, rather the videos that come out anyway, it looks like it went from there to videos inside a masjid. Mm. So how did, was the, tra- was the transition from there to there natural? Did you just naturally go from inside a studio, inside wherever, to inside a masjid, to publicly giving da'wah, or was it, you know, uh, was calculated move. We need to go from inside to outside, or whatever have you. Yeah, I mean, how did that change happen? It was it wasn't really calculated like that. Basically, uh, my 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 videos. If you look at them at the beginning, hardly any of them were indoors or in a particular set. It was always changing. Sometimes the set might be inside, but I was always on a street or I'd be given a lecture, and then th- that's what it would be. Very seldom would it be like just the plain white background or different kind of you know. Re- re- then we got different backgrounds, you know, kind of studio kind of thing. Re- very rarely it would be it would be on site. Mm-hmm. But that was um, before I started studying. Mm-hmm. When I started studying, I realized, what the hell are you doing, bro? Sit back. You need to be in seats taking notes. You mm-hmm. can't be talking and you don't have what you're trying mm-hmm. to give. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, not just that, um, the fact that you know classes were taking place and I'd go to classes, so I'd, ha- I'd have to cancel or I'd have to not agree, rather, sorry, to doing like lectures. So at that time, I actually stopped there was that there was that time i think it was maybe 2014 2015 i actually i actually basically stopped doing that or period like as in i'd hardly even put up any videos like mm-hmm, maybe like one mm-hmm. every every two months um and then basically after that time now that you know as i'm studying i felt like okay i'm, I'm growing a little bit more in knowledge i started to become a bit more regular with videos up until basically year before last when I mm. felt like Alhamdulillah okay now I'm at a stage where I'm not saying I'm knowledgeable but making videos I can like I can do a lot more to the point where we started putting out a video every day yeah um, and then basically what happened was that from that point you know um, we just we just realised that okay it's good we're talking to people on camera like there's no real life interaction mm-hmm. and now we're at a place where we feel a little bit more comfortable than before, not fully, but a little bit more comfortable to actually be in life with the, pe- with the, pe- with the people, uh, but just so we can compensate for that need of actually having like a person there in real life, do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. sometimes you might hear me say something in a video, but then you might, you know, not like, it's not the full, it's not the full package. Yeah. It's like 2D. Mm-hmm. To get the 3D, you just, you need to be with the people. You might, you know, sometimes it's that conversation I have with you after the lecture, or you know, just me saying, "Oh, right, let's let's go to the to, to, to the ice cream parlor and get some get some ice cream, some crepes." And, and that mm-hmm. time, that 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 gathering that we have is what has more of an impact on you 
then sometimes then like five or six videos that or, I've watched. Yeah. Or, or sometimes it's all of them together do something. Mm-hmm. So that's why we did it. But then we realized was that we neglected the online mm-hmm. because we were just focused so much on the offline mm-hmm. that we neglected the online. So now, inshallah, you know, one of the reasons again why I wanted to do this video was because now inshallah is going to be the change that is since mm-hmm. we've got the offline running, mm-hmm. alhamdulillah. Yeah. And inshallah ta'ala now the online is going to come back but hard. Mm-hmm. So, Inshallah, Allah gives us that balance. Absolutely. Okay, now we've spoken about the um, the transitions that we've had between, in, you know, the seeking knowledge and the doubt to non-Muslims and Muslims and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Where does Knowledge College fall in all of this? I know it wasn't Knowledge College initially. First it was Muslim Survival Guide and Muslim Survival Guide eventually became Knowledge College. But it, was, it was actually something before Muslim Survival Guide. What was it before Muslim Survival Guide? It was Dawah Academy. People, a lot of people don't the know about Dawah it. Academy. Are you talking about, for, was this an offshoot of the event? Rise of Dawah, man? No, it was before that. Oh. Okay. Was before that. Okay, yeah, I didn't even know about Dawah Academy. Wow. <laughs> Basically, I always wanted to start off a little, an academy where I could gather elite, all-star teachers. Initially, my my objective was just to get people to give da'wah. Yeah. That's before I was studying, right? Mm-hmm. And that was a da'wah academy, but then obviously we shut that down, alhamdulillah, okay. because we realized you can't jump straight to teaching people to give da'wah when they haven't studied and learned the basic principles of the religion first. So then? Second, the da'wah is the third stage. Mm-hmm. Like as we learned, al-usul thalatha wa adillatuha, the shaykh, he started off at the beginning of the book and he mentioned, arba'u, um, he said, I'lam rahimakallah, annahu yajibu alayna ta'allamu, yeah. It is obligatory upon us that we know four things. Mm-hmm. First is knowledge of Allah, His deen, and His Prophet. Yeah. Second, mm-hmm. to implement that knowledge. The third thing is da'wah to ilay, da'wah to then to give da'wah. See, mm-hmm. the da'wah comes third. And the fourth thing that's obligatory upon us is, is to be patient upon the harm that comes to you as a result of your da'wah. The so then the order yeah, is knowledge. Those, yeah. Knowledge. Mm-hmm. Action. Action. Da'wah. Da'wah. Patience, Patience upon them. And these are four things that are obligatory upon everyone. Mm-hmm. And this is what Allah said when he's when in Surah Al Asr. Okay. Those come in order though, right? They come in order. That's so the you point. can't give da'wah without implementing exactly. the knowledge that you learn. Exactly. That's so first you learn, then you implement, then you give then da'wah. Then you give da'wah. Okay. Okay. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, he mentioned this in Surah Al Asr. He said, All of mankind is in loss. Mm. Mm. The order of mankind is in a state of loss except for the people who believe, mm. do righteous deeds, in give that or basically, mm. and are patient. Mm-hmm. Enjoying each other in good and enjoying each other in patience. Mm-hmm. So Allah said everyone's lost except for the people who do these four things. Mm-hmm. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah he said, لو ما أنزل الله حجة على خلقي إلا هذه سورة لكفتهم. He said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not sent down as a proof anything else other than this surah, it would have been sufficient. But he's trying to say this, this surah is sufficient for you as a Muslim, it will mm-hmm. summarize your whole religion for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. It tells you these are the four things that you need to do. Mm-hmm. Seek knowledge, mm-hmm. implement it in your own life, mm-hmm. give that to others so that they can implement that knowledge mm-hmm. in their life, and then be patient upon that process yeah. of learning, implementing, and teaching. Mm-hmm. Learning, implementing, and teaching. Yeah. You see? And that's how it works. Like, and the knowledge comes first. Mm-hmm. For me to implement in my life, is that an action? Yes. For me to give you that or to implement in your life, is that me doing an action? Yeah, but not it really. It is, yeah. it is. It's yeah. because I'm, me doing that or two is no, an action. My action doesn't count as your action, but you're giving that to me. But me giving that or two is an action, yeah. right? So Imam al Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's chapter the chapter in his sahih. He said, Babu al ilmu qabl al qawli wal amal. He said, Knowledge comes before actions. Yeah. And then the evidence he brought was, Fa'alim annahu la ilaha illallah. He commanded you, he said, Have knowledge of la ilaha illallah. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said seek forgiveness mm. from your sins so then the seeking forgiveness is the action but what came before it was knowledge he said mm. Allah started with knowledge before he started with actions and statements mm-hmm. do you see so then the point with the knowledge college what I'm trying to say is that mm-hmm. is that there's a foundation to everything in the religion mm-hmm. and that's knowledge Yeah. because Allah mentioned iman first mm-hmm. in Surah Al-Asr and Iman doesn't come without knowledge. The fuel for Iman is knowledge. The foundation is knowledge. But that's what Allah said. He commanded you to have knowledge of La ilaha illallah. Then He mm-hmm. said, seek forgive, uh, sins, uh, forgiveness for your sins. Mm-hmm. So that's why it went from it, 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 it went from um, from the Dawah Academy, which is the third stage, yeah. which majority of people don't know about, mm-hmm. to the Knowledge College, which is the first stage. Yeah. Like in, in the middle, 
we had a pit pit stop, which is Muslim which survival is the Muslim survival guide. Yeah, and I, hope I actually love that name though. By the way, I think we should like make a course or something out of yeah. Muslim I think survival we should. Guide. Inshallah, like, that name should stay somewhere. We should apply it somewhere because it's a great concept. I mean, okay. the the whole point of the Muslim survival guide was, it was knowledge. It yeah. was to teach people the basics of their religion so that they may survive in this life and the afterlife yeah, exactly you got it do right you, yeah do you remember but, that but, but then, the, then the issue was that why change and establish the knowledge college yeah what what, what, what inspired that change okay what inspired that change was the fact that the Muslim survival guide was my own syllabus that I put together okay so the, who am I to put a syllabus there together? will be yeah there will be pitfalls there the scholars have put a syllabus before me so, so the knowledge college is a bit more um, of a codified in fact it is a codified syllabus and a classic approach we actually take what is taught in Medina mm-hmm. in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Masjid and we teach that Salah exact same syllabus mm-hmm. it's all together it's six levels mm-hmm. the sixth level hasn't been released yet but it's coming mm-hmm. up it's six levels Okay. we've taught the first we're in the second one right mm-hmm. now and we aim inshallah ta'ala to teach all of them on there teach them offline and we teach them online and that's how the knowledge college grows. Okay. Now, a second ago, you said that you made a syllabus of your own for Muslim Survival Guide. And now Knowledge College is one that is taken from the syllabus in Medina. Yeah. Now, th- the th- question that comes from that then is what makes you think you can take and apply that syllabus from Medina and do it now here across in the UK or uh, uh, with the teachers that you choose? Yeah. Right? As in what, what, what gives me the right to do it? No, yeah. What, what makes you think you can do it? My teacher told me I can do it. <laughs> I studied, so so I that means you text. took it from someone, right? Yeah, of course. I Beautiful. <laughs> put it on that's my back pocket, did I? That's all I needed. The way it works is that when you study and your teacher gives you permission mm-hmm. to teach a particular text, mm-hmm. and he won't give you that permission unless you know it. And do you, do you have like those links to Medina where they can like sign off on what's going on and whatnot? Um, we get... Uh, so Medina didn't give me permission like my teacher was Abdurrahman no, Medina is the Medina concept. with the certification yeah no yeah. I'm talking about is, is there somebody there who can sign off on what you're doing here yeah of course that's how we're getting the certificates for the, for the students like when they when they when they graduate mm-hmm. they get the certification from Mr. Nevi official perfect do you see what I'm saying yeah. so we we, 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 we we got the links there man mm-hmm. but a knowledge college also is is, is, a, bo- is a bit it's a, it's a lot more it's not just the, um, the studying element though mm-hmm. you see the ethos of knowledge college is a place where you make friends and learn. Okay. It's not just a place where you learn. Okay. And the reason for this is because... Um, That's genius, by the way. I don't know whose idea that was, but I, I didn't mention it, it before it when you told, it was, told me it was, about it. It was my idea. Oh <laughs> no, it's just that concept of people start studying or they start practicing. And one of the biggest problems that they face is they still have the same friends or they go through what I went through, which is they don't have any friends. Uh, and then they have to grind and put you through years of effort. You know, you're not alone. You know, you know me. I, I, the, my, <coughs> I had no friends for the first year. I mean, I, I, I sorry, I had two friends. Yeah. One who's in uni. Yeah. And I never used to go into uni. Mm. Another one was the guy who gave me doubt who left uni. Mm. So for me to go like in in the summer holidays, which when you're in uni is like six months, right? Mm-hmm. Five six months. I had no one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I know how deep it is. So the the thing is that. The reason we, we have this ethos with Knowledge College which is a place where you make friends and learn is because I live in the UK, I live with the people and yeah. I, know, I, I know really their reality and that's that people who want to change, they need two things to change. If they don't have these two things, they will never change. You mean people live in the West? Anywhere really and truly, okay. but like I'm, I, I'm talking more about the West because that's where I live, that's Go where on. I know. And these two things are knowledge and companionship. Hmm. Like if if you start practicing and all you have is good friends but no knowledge, mm-hmm. the moment those friends leave, mm-hmm. what will happen to you? You will leave as well. You will leave as well. So I hear. But like if you're studying, mm-hmm. but you don't have good friends, mm-hmm. then what's gonna happen? You'll only go so far. Yeah. And, and eventually, you'll, you'll when you come back out. to your same crowd, you'll burn out. You'll burn out. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what you need is you need the knowledge, which is you constantly fueling yourself, yeah. and you need the good friends and companionship to keep People you in a nice, healthy environment. In that direction, of course. Mm-hmm. Both need to be present. If even one is missing, mm-hmm. it's going to be a problem now. And you try to implement both that using knowledge. Code. So do we okay, do that? So how does that show? How do you mean how it shows? As in, for the people who don't know, how does Knowledge College work to provide companionship for people who are looking for that? That's just our energy, Achi. That's just our <laughs> energy. Like, like I said, like I said, if you let me be me, yeah, and not dry and stush. Mm-hmm. I help connect people. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I, I mean, like what we do is that like, we have matting in the masjid. Yeah. 
look, if we want to be specific, you have tips if anyone wants yeah, to. Yeah, no, I, I want I want to know. So then, wh- so for a person who's on looking, thinking, okay, so for example, if I join Knowledge College, how would I, how would that help me make friends? Because uh, uh, passive, either either subconsciously or consciously, a person who's practicing and doesn't have any friends is looking for that. So yeah, what so makes them think, okay, so definitely I'm going to join the Knowledge College now so I can make so friends. So at, 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 at the it's offline really programs, you know, that like we have food that we give at the end of every matching and Okay, I want to we talk about the food as well. Okay. In a second, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so I mean, everyone sits around, they, they eat and whatnot, and, and they just connect. And, you know, we, we create environments for them to connect, you know? Yeah. And we've only been improving that, like, you know, uh, put them in smaller groups. You know, people meet people. I, I, I know a lot of people, especially sisters, they feel uncomfortable that they don't really want to meet new people. Yeah. But they just do. Mm. And they don't, it doesn't happen in an awkward way. Yeah. And they make lifelong friends. Yeah, I've made some of my favorite. You know I've made they friends with some of my favorite people. Friends. Like it's it's right amazing now, that we could be, shout, it's amazing also. that we could be the reason with Allah's tawfiq that people are going to be best friends and probably going to be praying each other's janazah prayers. And yeah. you might say that's morbid, but I think that's beautiful. No, I think it's great. That you have a brother that you were seeking knowledge to start practicing together and he's going to be there and pray, pray, your, pray your funeral prayer. Yeah. And it started at the Knowledge College. Yeah. Online, the way we do it, is you know we got WhatsApp groups for the students mm. where they can engage, and we're mm. actually working. Um, and we had a meeting today mm. actually on how to actually greater enhance the mm. the connections amongst the students online. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely or offline, we've got it. Alhamdulillah, online we're trying to make it even mm. bigger and better. Mm. Inshallah, to add it. But that's the whole point: is the place where you learn to make friends, and that's why no, my vision and my goal with Knowledge College, Inshallah, to Allah, in the next year, is I want to raise about a hundred thousand mm-hmm. pound um, because cool. I want to. Have an actual campus. Oh, I want to have a campus. I already know about that. And this place yeah. is going to be a place that you know how we talk about the Apple Store. People come to the Apple Store. Mm-hmm. It's like it's not really an electronic store. It's like a hangout spot. Yeah. It's like a, it's a place where everyone comes, they chill out, and you know you got, you know, like everyone brings their friends. Oh, look at the new iPad. Everyone's like you know taking little videos and doing little editing there, and you know everyone's kind of vibing. Yeah. And it doesn't really seem like a store, does it? It mm-hmm. seems like a place where you just come hang out, and you do what? You chill. Yeah. So, you know, and they created that environment where when you come to the store, you don't want to leave to the point where, you know, they'll let you even charge your phone and they won't look at you like, why are you charging your phone? Mm -hmm. They'll let you even play with that the thing for hours and you never buy it. Mm -hmm. It's that they know that you go back Mm -hmm. and you have a, you had a little taste, you know, they tease you. You had a great experience. You had a great experience. So you'll want to come back and you keep coming back. And that's why people who, who buy Apple, they love it. Like, you know, like, I, I, I stick to Apple. I got the iPhone. I got the the I got the iMac. We got the 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 the, yeah, the, 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 the Apple netbook Air. You know, we, we, look, we got we got another one here. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got one That's here. Yeah. Got one here. Yeah. You yeah. know, we got one there. We got one there. Like mm. one we, we we all got it. Yeah. And you recruit your friends. So I'm saying they created that experience mm. by being a bit different. You see what mm. I'm saying? So we wanted to create a campus that's going to be different. Yeah, but it's not gonna be. It's a future uh, campus. Yeah, it's not gonna be a campus where it's gonna be like, you know, some dead desk, table, chair, and mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not, definitely not like school, and definitely not like Muslim schools where they don't really invest in these kind of mm-hmm. things. But it's gonna be a. It's, we're gonna make it as a chill out spot. Yeah. That there's gonna be a lecture theatre where people study, inshallah. But then we're gonna set up the place to be. A jam spot mm-hmm. where people can connect. Yeah. Like a little cafeteria. Um, you know, just I don't want to let off too much, mm-hmm. but we've got some plans. We've got big plans about okay. the way it's going to be. Inshallah. Okay, Allah, it's amazing. So that's the plan. If anyone yeah. wants to donate a hundred thousand pound, <laughs> you know where to find us. You know where to find us. Okay. Um, talking about the food, there's been a lot of questions asked. Um, Dalman, do you pay for the food yourself? No, I don't. Mad Team Rush is every week Saturday for the brothers yeah. and every week Sunday for the sisters. There's food about 80% of the time. Do you pay for it? No, I don't. I mean, it, it, it costs... I mean, at one point, it was costing £500 a weekend, so that would be two grand a month. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't have that. Like, in Alhamdulillah, we, we raise the money online. Yeah. And the people, they contribute. Okay. Now, why do you ra- raise money for data projects instead of funding the data yourself? So obviously, uh, for a very, 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 very long time, we funded the data ourselves. Mm-hmm. But then when you want the data to grow to a certain level, mm-hmm. you need to be able to fund it. I mean, these two things, they go hand in hand, which is the knowledge and the money. That's yeah. what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you are only allowed to be jealous of two types of people, a man who has knowledge 
Mm. And a man who is wealthy destroys it in the path of Allah. Mm. And this is not an, a jealousy where it's like an envy, like, mm. you know, you want the man to lose mm. what he has. No. But it's the kind where it's like, oh, I really wish mm. I had that. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Where you destroy With your wealth in the path of Allah or you have knowledge. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So then now, some people have knowledge and some people have money. So then they work together. The guy who's got money, now some people give proje- they give lots of projects they give lots of money to projects where there are people who are not knowledgeable mm-hmm. and they don't they just waste that money they, they don't actually produce any effects yeah and then there's those people who are knowledgeable who are teaching but they don't have no money to push the data forward mm-hmm. so there's only so far we can go yeah. from our own pockets until we need people to join in as in you don't have to join in uh, some people are sour about it like why are you raising money Robin, listen with all due respect you don't have to it's just not going to reach you yeah do you see what i'm saying like, i remember i remember i was raising money to be able to take the kids to get ice cream after every tafsir class or stab the friends tafsir class and we're yeah, doing I it remember. we're, we're taking them to creams and it was, was amazing, amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. We had to, was we amazing. Had, it was amazing we had some yeah. like you know brothers we take care of all of them and one brother who's you mm-hmm. recently started taking drugs mm-hmm. is telling me you're wasting your money brothers mm-hmm. and sisters in Syria are dying you should be giving them that money mm-hmm. and, I, and, and, and that really concerned me because I'm like bro no one's saying don't give money to the brothers and sisters in Syria. Mm-hmm. I'm saying give money to them, mm-hmm. but no one thing that when they die, at least they die as Muslims. Yeah, the kids yeah, here you're neglecting them, but they die in kuffar or they mm-hmm. die in with lots of sins. With or lots of sins, mm-hmm. at least them are dying in a state of righteousness that mm-hmm. these people don't have. Mm-hmm. Not only that, your son is taking drugs. Mm-hmm. Your son is, is your problems is, are at home. Not just that, I'm taking care of your son, man. Mm-hmm. I'm taking care of your son. Yeah, eventually he's gonna come back to us. No, no, I'm saying he's there. Oh. I'm saying he's there, he's <laughs> eating great. ice cream. You know I'm saying? In, the, in the example of that person, eventually, he we will take care of him. That's what I'm saying. So, 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 so the point is like, After Allah. I'm saying that money I just raised brought your youth here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're complaining, why are you raising money about mm-hmm. this? So, I come across this all the time, you see what I'm saying? I'm like, don't. Just mm-hmm. know it's your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister. Then they're not going to re- receive the data. Mm-hmm. The second question about the food was, People asking, is it even if permissible? anyone does want to donate? By the way, they kind of the link below. Yeah, uh, the, the second the second point about the food was people were asking, is it even permissible or is it an, is it an innovation to call people using food? If you say, oh my goodness, there's going to be pizza, there's going to be ice cream, there's going to be donuts, whatever have you, people are going to be like, oh my god, I'm going to go just for the donuts. If people come just for the donuts, are you allowed to call people just to donuts? I mean, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would give people money just to become Muslim. Wow, subhanallah. The one time the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he gave a man, uh, I think it was sheep or goats, mm-hmm. that were between two mountains in a valley. He said, "Take it all." And you have to understand that's like giving a factory away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like giving a production line so away. It's a big thing. It's a big yeah, thing. I mean, for you to give away all of this with these sheep. Well, and sheep goats, and goats are still kind of worth like money. Yeah, but I'm saying in those days that's yeah, that's a big that, deal. That's your economy is based mm-hmm. on them, you know. So you just gave away your production line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just said, just give it. So this man's shocked. He goes mm-hmm. back to his people and he's like, today, I, he, he said, uh, he said, he said, Aslimu. Mm-hmm. People accept Islam. Mm-hmm. But today I met a man, Muhammad, he f- doesn't fear poverty and the people mm-hmm. would accept Islam in droves. Mm-hmm. So uh, giving people something to bring their heart close is not an innovation. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, um, it's something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do. Mm-hmm. And the people would come to Islam sometimes for the money, sometimes for other things. But then when they come, they, they fall in love with the deen. Mm-hmm. And some brothers, they come. And to be honest, I don't really think anyone really comes for just the food. Like, let's be real on it. Like, yeah. th- th- these are kids who are off the deen. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? They don't really, they're not going to come all the way from East London, North London, South London for food. Mm-hmm. The food is just something that we do to keep them together. Yeah. After they come, it's not mm. even a reason we bring them to bring mm. them in. You know that, right? Because we have it right at the end. Yeah, we have it. After the, end. the talk is over, um, <coughs> so it's just something to keep them Abu in Monzo the masjid, so they you. can just connect. Yeah, make friends and whatnot. Yeah, that's what it is. Of course, of course, of course. Okay, um, that 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 brings me to the uh, like final edge of what we're going to talk about, which is n- the current doubt that you do. Mm. Now, you made an emphasis earlier on, or maybe you haven't, but maybe we've spoken about it, which is that you don't do doubt with people who are not clearly Salafi. Yeah. Right. Now, a lot of people would say. There are Salafis out there who you don't work with. Mm. Is that because you feel like they're not Salafi? Are you the Salafi policeman? Are you going to stop people from working with you just because you think they're not Salafi, even though they might be? 
or something along something no, to that I, effect. I, it's, it's not. It's nothing like that. It's basically, I just don't like the idea of working with people anyway. Period. Mm-hmm. The reason I don't like the idea of working with pe- people is because when I'm when I'm working on my own, it's just me that's responsible for my own actions. Yeah. But when you associate yourself with people, you now become responsible for their actions, mm-hmm. and sometimes they start doing things which are wrong. Which now you have to justify or clarify. Well, not just that. It just affects you now. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Sometimes those mistakes are minor. No problem. We can deal with them. We can overlook them. Everyone makes mistakes. Mm. I've made mistakes myself. Mm. But then, then sometimes those mistakes grow into major mistakes. Sometimes those major mistakes keep you within Salafia still. Mm. But sometimes they take you outside of Salafia. Mm. So I'm saying some. sometimes I see certain people flirting well, you can't, I can't, I'm not going to say, oh, this person's not a selfie, but like, and what you're doing is confusing me. Mm-hmm. Why would you be working with this particular yeah, person? Yeah, like for example, Why? who you work with. It's really yeah. important, isn't it? There's this conversation of who you give dawah with is a yeah. big thing in manhood. 100%. I had, I had assumed And that I don't know how some of these people miss it. I'm not saying I'm a master of manhood myself, uh, nothing like that. I'm just saying, like, it's such a big thing. How could you, like... Uh, publicly associate especially in your da'wah if you're 100%, a da'wah you're, you're doing da'wah and you're ascribing yourself or associating with people who do dodgy 100%. things Allah will ask you about that but see that's, that's it's not even funny uh, that's, 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 that's what I'm saying that's, that's, that's my point like salafi ahl sunnah and jama'ah is not just about what you say but it's mm. about who you associate with mm. like the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said uh rajul ala dini khalilihi falyanzur ahadukum ahadukum man yukhalil Mm-hmm. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "A man is upon the religion of his friends. Mm-hmm. So, be careful and be conscious of that, and, and analyze and observe who your, your friend is." Yeah. The Salaf would say, "You might be able to hide your aqidah from us, your belief, you but you cannot hide, hide your, your friends. friends." Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. wh- I'm saying, why are you rolling with these people? Okay, you're preaching Salafia, yeah. mm-hmm. but do you understand you're confusing people along the way? Yeah. And 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 no doubt, if you're with them, you're being influenced by them. Yeah. No doubt, you're being influenced by them. Okay. Yeah. Either you're influencing them or they influence you. And the thing mm-hmm. is, we see you in their camps more than we see you in our camps. Mm-hmm. Or you're starting to be in their camps more. I mean, remember the prophets were shepherds of sheep, mm-hmm. not camels. Why? Just the camels. Arabs were shepherds of camels. And mm-hmm. that made them harsh and hard because the camel is an arrogant animal. Mm-hmm. And to be able to deal with the camel, you need to be tough. Mm-hmm. And then the sheep are miskeen, miskeen, soft, little, you know, like stupid kind of animals. Mm. They just run away and a wolf just grabs them. Yeah. So, you know, you have to just be merciful and soft and tender with the sheep and these mm-hmm. little sheep come back and, you know, just take care of the sheep. Mm-hmm. You have to take care of the sheep. So, so that made the prophet soft. Mm-hmm. That made the t- prophets tender and merciful mm-hmm. and patient with their people. You have to be mm-hmm. patient with the sheep. With the, with the camel, you have to be arrogant. That's mm-hmm. why the camel herders in the bedrooms were arrogant. That's mm-hmm. why the Arabs were so arrogant at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then what you learn from that is even the animals affect you. Mm-hmm. Like I say, I say, actually, the animals affect you. What about humans that are talking to you, polluting your mind? Mm-hmm. You're sitting in their conference. How do we know it doesn't affect you? Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's Remember very I, deep. It's so actually yeah, really important. Yeah, a whole discussion to be had. So the point mm-hmm. is that they do things that is like, why are you doing it? Some some don't make their manhaj clear. I'm not going to say you're not a Salafi. Some, I know you're a Salafi, but then, you know, whatever the weather. So... And I just want to give a message out to my Salafi brothers, those who are older than me, those who are younger, those who are same, those who are coming out of Medina about to graduate soon or other parts of the world from different institutions, those who have mm-hmm. already graduated. Some people feel like they have to go to the people of Bid'ah mm-hmm. to push their da'wah. Mm-hmm. Now here, I don't mean going to a message of a person of Bid'ah. You can, mm-hmm. If you go to their message, as long as they don't put conditions on you mm-hmm. and they give you their ear to listen and teach them the haqq, mm-hmm. Then you could do that no problem. There's a lot of discussion about that. I think we'll save that one for another day. Yeah. But, um, but, 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 but like the in the, the khulasa yeah. of the issue that there's nothing wrong with that. There could be particular specific situations. Refer back to the for your specific situation. But the general rule of thumb is you know because you're talib al ilm. That's who I'm talking to. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's generally speaking, yeah? yeah. As long as they don't put no conditions or whatever. Yeah, yeah, right. the, now, but the issue is when you go and you're like on the same poster, you share the same platform. Because now you're saying I'm associated, I'm representing, he's representing me. You know, we're, we're, we're on the same panel, we're on a team, we're, we're working together. It's definitely shady. I don't know how you can call it clear. Clear, clear, clear like salafia. Yeah, it gets to be... I mean, it could be... 100% it gets to be The, 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 the thing is, some, 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 some might be sincere, no problem. But what I want to say to these beloved brothers of mine is that you, I don't want them to be able to feel mm-hmm. that they have to share a platform with these guys to get their da'wah out there. Mm-hmm. I'm saying just call me. Mm-hmm. Because we have a platform, alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm saying I'm... I've, I've, as much as I said I don't like working with people, 
just as much as I hate working with people and I'm scared to work with people mm -hmm. because of this, mm -hmm. I have been working hard to work with people. Mm -hmm. We've been linking said if he's thinking mm -hmm. of a provider, look at look, look at Ustad Abu Taim, I've said yes, you know, Ustad Khalid, Ustad Abdul Ahad, you know, Ustad Abdul Rahman, like, we, we be, you know, we, now we've got projects starting with Sheikh Abu Sahib soon, like, we work, we're working to bring Salafis together, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to give them platforms. Young students, we've got a pure students. platform here, we've got a pure mm -hmm. platform here, we don't, we don't have to worry. Yeah. Just, we don't have to worry, yeah. we don't need them, we've got it here. Mm -hmm. if, if you're going to them because you're saying, I want to be able to reach out to the people mm -hmm. and say, we, we help you reach out to them. Just give mm -hmm. me a call, give me an email, you know where to find me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be that hard. I'm here to help you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help you. You know, you might be more knowledgeable than me and I can benefit from you and I can facilitate for you, you know, what you're lacking. Like you can teach me and I can facilitate this for you. Mm -hmm. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So, so easy. Japanese. Of course, of course, of course. But say Allahumma barik. Allahumma barik. You guys do. Okay, the last thing I want you to do just before we wrap up is tell me in a few words all the projects that you're currently running. So I know about Knowledge College. I know mm -hmm. about, actually to be honest, I know about all of them, but I'm saying like we've got Knowledge College, Matting in the Masjid, Umrah with the Mandem, a couple others. So would you like to? Yeah, I mean, the ones that I like to talk about right now is Knowledge College, mm -hmm. on the online and offline, Matting in the Masjid, and Umrah with the Mandem. Mm. And there's other things that are there right now, but not to perfection. So I wouldn't like to talk about okay. them too tough. Other things are in a pipeline, so they haven't come into existence as of yet. So I won't mm -hmm. want to talk about them too tough either. Okay, there's a lot. The one thing that I would tell you to watch out for mm -hmm. is the other teachers that are coming out. The new teachers on Knowledge College. So, I, Who so, so I'm not just necessarily on Knowledge College, but they are Qadr Allah Knowledge College as well. I'm saying watch out for them people. Yeah. There's a lot of benefit to come from them. Part, 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 part of the direction that we want to take with Knowledge College this year is to bring these people to the masses. Yeah. Inshallah, to mm. so they can benefit from them. They'll benefit from them a lot more than they would have ever benefited from it, even if mm. there was any benefit, because they're more, okay. they, you know, they've been studying proper and whatnot. So that's something to look out for, Inshallah. And Umrah would demand them. Uh, it's a life-changing thing. You know, we go with five-star Umrah. Uh, inshallah we're thinking of doing Umrah with your spouse Umrah with your wife or something like that uh, probably like maybe like April time inshallah you know where we take brothers and sisters who are married mm. and it's going to be like uh, like relationship coaching and yeah, helping yeah, them yeah. reignite their passion and their love mm. for each other and mm. you know what not and also you know come to do Umrah yeah of course yeah that's okay. the that's the plan that's the I think that's the objective so that's a wrap is that is that is that a wrap? Um, it's a wrap. I think I think, I think that's how it. How yeah. long how long have we been going? We for? went for two hours and sixteen minutes. <laughs> oh, well, okay, okay, okay. Listen, listen. Uh, this was a nice. I actually think we really needed to do this. I, one. You know, can I ask you guys? A it question? still didn't fill the the void of what I needed to be done. Maybe we'll, mm. we'll touch on different things more in the in the. But I think series. it's a start. Like but I, f I think there's so much so much that happens in so many different fragmented places and pieces that. All that context, we just wanted to give people context. Right? Yeah, all that yeah, context yeah. can't be given one shot, but that's why we dedicated a show that roast, yeah. roast and down, man, roast and down, man. which is going to be for that, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. I just wanted to ask, like, do I am, am I sounding dead? What do you mean? Am I sounding dead? Like, because for me, I'm I'm just relaxed. No, no, no. You sound fine. It's just, it's um, just like for me, I'm in a very comfortable, relaxed. I hope so. I'm very no, relaxed. I, I'm no. So I'm saying it from the angle of so these things that I am. I am I sounding dead? It sounds sick, like, like this tone of voice. Yeah, it's perfect. Don't worry. Because I'm relaxed. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie, like, you got me comfortable. <laughs> like, I thought there was a camera here. Like. No, no, no. I'm saying um, uh, there's, there's, there's certainly a few things they went into, which I know about because I've been mm. here when it was happening. I just hope that we painted the correct image to people yeah. who weren't here while it was happening. Um, yeah. I'm just going to say people, like, inshallah, I know I feel relaxed. I know I feel relaxed like, because it's weird because... I made a commitment I promised myself that I was going to go back to being my old self which is just a bit energetic I love it and gas it's happening and it's there like, it's if you see I told Instagram, you I, I, I said this to you last year but constantly. I had this relaxed mode as well that's like. good yeah no that's, but that's natural that's it's natural, natural. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's fine me. that's actually what we need more of mm. you know what that means though what it's going to be more reputations coming then. <laughs> that's fine as long as they're fair and just and with mercy of course, and rahman without a shadow of a doubt um yeah but i think i think i think that's it for today well 
Keep like moving, it. brothers. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I don't know how to end this one. Listen, bro, you're, you're, you're a podcast host. You, you <laughs> to start, you to end. Okay. Um, I have Mr. Wavy. I sat down with our brother Imran and spoke about all kinds of stuff. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace.